Good morning and welcome to The Breview, the Instagram Live podcast where Kindama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. I'm your host, Adam, otherwise known as Cafe Kendama here on Instagram, and we are incredibly excited to dive into this week's episode of The Breview, featuring Grain Theory Pro, Adrian Esteban. You guys know him. He is one of the most infamous players in the Kendama community with his string wizardry. And we are going to be diving into the the string mind that exists in him to learn more about what goes on inside the minds of one of our favorite pro players. So I'm super excited for this one. If you guys have questions that you would like to ask in today's episode, there's a couple ways to always do that. One, you can always head to the post ahead of time and drop a question on there. Those get inserted into the show notes so that way I have them ahead of time. But you can also ask questions here live today by putting them down in the Q&A tool. That's that little question box at the bottom, and we will be asking your questions today. But before we do, and before we get far into this episode and a deep conversation with our boy and our friend, Adrian Esteban, I always want to know, what are you drinking this morning as you join the Breview? You best believe I'm drinking some coffee. I don't think this show would be the same show if I wasn't drinking coffee, and so this morning I'm drinking a freshly brewed cup of new beans that I got from a new roaster that you guys have not heard mentioned on this show, and so let me give them a quick little shout out because I think they're super cool and super special, and this is my second cup of theirs, but a different different bag. We got two bags. I uh, have a friend here in the city, his name is Tyler, and he runs uh, an Instagram account called Commonly Coffee. He's always doing great coffee education, so if you want another coffee account to follow to get some insight on specialty coffee and how you can be a better barista at home, definitely go follow him. But he does these group order buys of roasters we typically wouldn't have access to to get us good prices on quality coffee. And so this time, he did a bulk order from Proud Mary Coffee Roasters. Now, if you're in Portland, you might know them because they have a location in Portland, uh, but they are an Australian-based coffee company, and we are drinking their coffee today. And so I am super excited. This is a Kenyan. I'm about to have my first sip. And this morning, I already drank a little bit of the Burundi, and it was fantastic. So here goes the Kenyan. Oh, yeah, that is good. It was going to be good regardless, but it is quite nice. All right, guys, we are going to dive in here right away. Uh, I'm really excited to get Adrian on here. Uh, but before we do, I do want to say a couple shout outs into the community. We'll shout out some of the people in the chat here as well with what you're drinking. But let me say a huge congratulations to one of the greatest legends in the Kanama community, Alex Roish, on getting a remake of his pro or his legend model. And that was just released, I think, yesterday. So I think you can go cop those already. Uh, definitely go check them out. Alex Roish is a longtime listener of the review, huge Kanama advocate, and has been pushing this game more than we could ever thank him for. So guys, uh, go show some love to Alex Roish on his channel. Uh, I think it's Ken to Alex uh, on Instagram. Go show him some love. Go pick it up. The man is a true legend in all things Ken Dama. All right, let's see what you guys are drinking this morning. We see New Lace Kendama drinking that Ethiopian this morning. That's what we like to hear. We got uh, Lutzi Top Sendamas. He's got a new custom, so you guys should go check that out. We got Chan the Man drinking Canada Dry. Let's let's go, baby. Canada. You know we like that. Adrian Esteban is in the chat drinking some coffee. We're going to find out a little bit more about what he's drinking. We got Nick McLean with that white chocolate mocha. Yes, this is what I like to see, guys. Absolutely. We got T Lane with that Starbucks Nitro Brew. Oh, yeah. Uh, not Ken to Alex. Colin, thank you. Uh, it's Supernog73. I knew that. Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, it's the morning. We're just getting that second cup in. We got Kendamagachi with the Yerba Gang. And with that said, let's get our friend Adrian on here. Mr. Sears is going to be joining the review in a hot second. We got Prosper Above with the Blue. Foria, Adrian Esteban, welcome we to the it. review, man. Welcome. Oh, thank you, actually. <laughs> I always mess that up. I'm always just like... <laughs> no, no, no. You are welcome to my review. <laughs> well, I'm welcomed to be welcomed by you. <laughs> hey, well, we are all stoked that you were you were able to join us today. Yeah. It was a little bit last minute. We had a scheduling conflict with our, our past guest that was going to mm -hmm. be on here, Wyatt Bray. We're going to get him on in a, in a month or two from now. Okay, uh, well, but we, I was so thankful that you were willing to just jump on here so quickly. Yeah. So 
dude thank you for uh, making my yeah, life easy yeah, dude i'm stoked um it's funny uh ever since um i was like oh man it's i'm gonna be on a review eventually so i've just been like <laughs> men i've been like mentally preparing ever since that first dm like <laughs> <laughs> what, have, what have you been doing to prepare you've been going through your coffee regimen trying to get that up to par no i'm like yeah i do i'm like uh I, I've been like a bit less like kind of like uh, not as much on coffee but then in the past three weeks of watching every single review episode <laughs> I haven't seen and just be just being well versed I, I I caved in I was like okay I'll get myself a French press did you okay so you, you got a French press yeah 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 heck yeah okay yeah. I like that it's been uh, a minute and... where'd you get your beans from where what are you drinking Oh, so this morning, I'm actually drink, drinking this Vietnamese coffee blend by by um a company called Chung Nguyen. They make a bunch of, like, the only Vietnamese coffee I know, like, they just make the beans. It's like a, I, I believe it's like an Arabica Robusta blend of some kind. But okay. it gets me going. I, I okay. Uh, that is super cool. I've, I don't think I've ever had, like, real Vietnamese coffee. Is that, okay, wait, hold on. We're going to yeah. dive more into your story for sure in a little bit. But where, where, are you, where do you live? You're in San Diego? Yeah. Uh, currently, I live in Santa Cruz, California. Santa Cruz. Okay, yeah. but you were from San Diego, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I lived a good a good minute in San in San Diego. Okay, right on. So, is this Vietnamese coffee place uh, or this roaster in Santa Cruz? Oh uh, no, it's actually like um I believe they're just um this this very well known Vietnamese coffee like like blend like maker or I don't know the right term, but company. yeah, yeah. Ro roaster. I yeah, yeah. And uh, th I, I believe for at least like this like kind of coffee, I forget the exact details. They're just like the biggest supplier of it. So okay, that's so, I know. okay, I'm gonna have to try some Vietnamese coffee. Yeah. I'm always keen on trying new stuff. I love new coffees. I'm 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 a I'm a stickler to what I know is good, but I do like exploring outside of that. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to come down to Santa Cruz and and get you to brew me a. <laughs> A French pressed Vietnamese coffee, dude. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like um, if if I made it real, like really like Vietnamese coffee, there there's like a certain type of um, it almost in the same light as a almost like a pour over, but only a cup, and it's like I believe it's called a, maybe uh, I forget the exact word, but it's this very certain type of just like a steep brewing thing where uh, okay. it just. Uh, it just drips for about eight nine minutes, and then you have this really dense like rich coffee that just juices yeah. you up. I love okay. it. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. I like it. Well, hey, Adrian, we are going to have a, a wild journey through a lot of your life, a lot of the, the worlds that you've been in through kind of yo-yo, Kanama, mm. string theory, diving into a whole bunch of that uh, and have some fun throughout the way, guided by some questions from our live viewers and on the post. Um, but before we do, I always like to ask a couple, you know, warm up questions, get oh, it yeah. moving. And oh, you've been doing your homework, so, yeah, so yeah. you already know what's coming. Dude, I, I, I've, been, I've been preparing for these questions and, so, and I'm still just like, ah, I, I'm what, not sure, but what, what, if I, what if I just throw you a curveball and don't ask you the same question? Dude, it, it, then <laughs> word up, I'm going to be answering them anyways. Let's go. Like, I, <laughs> No, no curveballs today, as far as I know. So we, we already got, we know what you're drinking today, but I want to know if you could teach one person their first spike, past or present, who would it be? Ooh, okay. So I, I do have like a, a prepared answer for this because mm -hmm. I've never, I, I, in the past three weeks, I can't dial in on a single person, but I think the only criteria that matters to me is um, they could help grow Kandama in a positive way. Whoever this okay. person is, if they do like a, a big amount or a small amount, as long as they could in, like contribute to Kendama in a positive way, I'm all cool. I'm good. I'm where to go. Okay. Who who is the? Well, I mean, we'll dive into this, but I'm curious. Who is the person who taught you Kendama first? Oh, um, I wouldn't say anyone specifically taught me Kendama first because uh, my first introduction to Kendama was it being exploded at my. Basically, Kendama existed at the high school I went to. All four okay. years I went, so. I was just always around it, trying other people's playing it. So sure. I just picked up whatever I saw in okay. that initial round. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll dive into that for sure. I want to know more of that story. And I think that's cool. How, how old are you right now? I'm 24. 24. Okay. So you've been out yeah. of high school for a while now. You've been playing yeah, for what? Yeah. Eight, 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 uh, nine, ten years? I believe, um, maybe, eight, yeah. Dude, I don't even count anymore. <laughs> whenever, whenever 2015, I, I graduated 2015. However, like, oh man, okay. actually, so like, like six, years seven ago. years ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right on. So not as long as I would have thought. 
which is yeah. insane because you have obviously progressed in, insanely fast at Kanama and developed your own world of Kanama as well. Yeah. Uh, that is so different from the rest of the norm. And you've done that in only six years. Whereas when I look at the roster of pros that we've had featured on the preview, so many of them are like 12 year legends, nine year legends, 10 year mm -hmm. legends. They've been playing for forever. And so yeah. for someone to kind of break that mold and get there in six years and make a name for themselves is, is really cool. No, yeah. So, uh yeah, it's really cool how people just progress in all their different ways. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, we. I already have questions stirring in my head of what I want to, what okay. I want to ask. But we got one more question. We okay, gotta get let's through. go. Let's go. Uh, before we get into the main meat of the conversation today, okay, uh, I want to know who is the most inspiring player for you today, not of all time, yeah. but just no, just today. I, I thought about it, and I have a very even three way tie. Like, <laughs> it's like it's because um. I can never not like in this like in in this day if I see any of these people like do any sort of trick, my, it lights up my head and it makes me want to pick up and pick up kendama maybe scream a little like yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is um three way tied between uh Ben Harold, Benjamin Mastek and Marcus Lander. Oh. Okay, that's a good squad, man. I, I just got the follow back from Marcus Lander this past week, and I was a little bit excited because Marcus Lander did Lander Lingo, was one of yeah. my favorite edits. I love his play style. I got a lot of inspiration from him, mm -hmm. especially in my early years. So he, he definitely is someone I look up to as a Canelo player that inspires me to, tr to think outside of the box, right? Dude, and exactly. all three of those people you mentioned have such unconventional ways of playing Kanama. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are advancing the game itself into new worlds. So. Yeah. And and you are a part of that now, right? You're you're in that squad. You're like in that group of people that people look to and say, like, if I want to change the way I think about Kanama, I got to go either watch Benjamin Mastig, Marcus Lander, Ben Harrell, or Adrian Esteban. Dude, that even even like if anyone tells me anything like that, I still to this day I'm just like oh, I'm just a Kanama dude, whatever. Like <laughs> <laughs> I like my ball and cup and string. <laughs> I'm just I'm just out here playing ball in a cup, but I use the string more than I use the ball and cup. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> I get so many interesting outside interactions with Kanama, with the whole um, is that a yo-yo? But and I'll just be like, uh. But for you, it almost <laughs> is. It's like yeah, it's kinda, yeah. it kind of is a yo-yo for 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 you. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's always it's always like a funny, weird thing, and some and often I'll also just have a yo-yo also on hand and be like, oh no, these are completely different. And then right, do you uh, ever show people no, like this is a yo-yo, this is a kendama, but watch I, me I, do the exact same tricks on both. No, yeah, oh, dude, that's that's honestly like if 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 it ever comes to it, I'll probably do that just because uh, my my yo-yo like string knowledge is very based upon my kendama string knowledge, so. Yeah, so yeah. you act, you you went from Kanama into yo-yo, right? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I've only been playing yo-yo consecutively for three years right now. Interesting, interesting. I, I'm going to want to learn a little bit about how that transition was for you because we had mm -hmm. Joe Nelson on the podcast last week. Yeah. And he talked about his story of going from yo-yo into Kendama and how mm -hmm. that impacted some of his play. He, he wouldn't have said yeah. that it impacted it like drastically but i know for for some individuals like going from yo-yo into kanama opens up a world of string maneuvers and string mm -hmm. tricks that you wouldn't think about but you've done the opposite route where you took something that's considered like a concrete you know land the trick uh, play style yeah and turned it into more of a yo-yo flow freestyle always in motion kind of a game Mm -hmm. So I think I think it's really fascinating and interesting, but that's all what we're going to be talking about Thank today. You. <laughs> in and advance I'm, already, <laughs> I am geeked about it already, Adrian. Um, before we do, I want to remind those of the people that are listening in the chat uh, that we would love for you guys to ask questions today. We have a few questions that were submitted ahead of time on the post that we already have in the show notes, but drop some cues down in the question box at the bottom for Adrian if you want your name shouted out or your questions asked in today's episode. Uh, this episode will be up on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts, and on YouTube on Monday. So stay tuned for the post-live release. It always comes out on Monday now. So if you want to watch it early, be here for the lives. With that let's said, go. Adrian, let's dive in to this let's week's do, review. Let's, yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'm ready. Like, I, it, It's funny. I'm, a, I'm, I'm usually an extremely introverted, like in a, in a hut type of dude. But if it comes to talking Dhamma and just like, just going all in, I'll just be like, Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Wait, yeah. wait. Okay. Talk to me. Do you do, do you do personality tests at all? Have you ever done any? Oh, I, I have a couple. And what, which ones have you done? Um, 
Oh, man, I can never remember the names, but I've taken every single, I've like, out of curiosity, I've taken most of those like just different like, with, yeah. um, the one that comes to mind most, uh, most clearly is like the one that um, you get the four letters at the end. Yeah, Myers-Briggs. Yeah. Uh, Do you remember what you are? Um, I, I forget the exact, I, for, I always forget the letters, but it's the, it's like introverted, mediator, uh, uh, creative. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what, what lettering that would be. I, I find yeah. I, what I want to start doing, I think, is asking people if they know on the podcast you know, what their personality types are, because I wonder, mm. I, I'm curious if, you know, not that personality types are indicative of you yeah. know, who someone is necessarily. I don't believe that. But, but I do think it would be interesting to like create a chart of like, okay, personality types in their play styles of mm. how they approach Kanama, because you know, I approach Kendama differently than other people, but I have a unique personality. And is that correlated? If I found other people with the same personality type as me, would they have a similar play style as me or a way that they approach Kendama? Because I'm curious about that. I think that'd be so cool. No, yeah, because that's like, um, that's something I've definitely thought about too, because and just in the terms of like very much like conceptual Kendama trick talk and everything, I've realized that it's, it's like something uh, that to some people just go is completely over their heads or other people are could have an, an incredibly like stimulating like brainstorm session back and forth mm -hmm. and for at least the people i've been like at least for me personally i've been able to do this with are people that i just feel like uh damn i i feel like i know you but i but we just all but i know everything about how you are with this cup and ball toy and mm -hmm. i don't know it's just interesting it's something i've noticed with like at least especially with my teammates on grain theory where the longer i've spent time with them i just realized like oh man it's it feels like a good fit or whatever it could be mm -hmm. yeah absolutely okay so talk to me about yeah. you know early years pre-dama you picked up dama in high school but mm -hmm. you know t tell me about adrian esteban outside of kendama like who are you outside of playing kendama dude that's so hard like it's so hard now to think about that because kendama it's like just so, it's like Kendama is kind of my life right now. It's like mm -hmm. so fully, I'm like, I'm full in right now. And, but, but beforehand, uh, I'd say I was a person, type of person that, um, uh, I just had interests, interests that were just kind of like fleet and go. Like, uh, um, I was always like a sort of like, like I was saying, introverted kid. So I kind of just stayed at home. I moved around a lot as a kid, didn't really make the most friends. But I'd be at home being uh, when Bionicles were a thing. That side of video, Dude. Go, you know, you know. Yeah, of course I know Bionicles. Yeah. Man. So that I played, I, I played uh, mad Bionicles. I, I believe <laughs> Bionicle and Beyblades were my first passion. This is followed shortly shortly by by a uh, Yu Gi Oh. Yes. Like uh, yes. very competitively playing for. A, a no, you spin. didn't for real. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's yeah, amazing. Uh, were, yeah, were you a big uh, fan of the show? Oh, dude, yeah, no, yeah, those shows, those shows were made to make you buy the cards. Like, yeah, well, exactly. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure the card game was like created and then the show was created afterwards. Because mm -hmm. if you go back, I, I, was, I had this chat with uh, Jarrett Black, homie, love the guy to bits. He's a Calgary guy. People Word. need to follow this guy. He's so good at Kendall. Dude, no, I'll, I'll hit him up. Yeah, go hit him up. But he's a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan. But we were talking about it. And if you go back and rewatch like the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, like the the show mm -hmm. they don't even know how to play the game like it doesn't make any yeah. sense no, in the yeah, first it, little bit like the game itself doesn't even have a structure in the show yet no, uh dude even, i remember um it, it comp watching that show completely distorted like my initial like <laughs> year or two of playing because i'm like whoa they're just making up rules and whatever like, yeah yeah it's like weevil underwood he's like because we're because we're dueling on an island that has yeah. grass i have better advantages here it's like my you can play a card to get has that no pathetic <laughs> cards uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, it, absolutely. Okay, so Yu-Gi-Oh! Bionicle Man. Dude, yeah, uh, oh. on the Bionicle note, no. did you ever play there was a there was a PC game. Uh, I can't even remember what it was, but it was like this like game, it was like a puzzle sort of game that you had to like get off of the island of Mata Nui or whatever it was called. Oh, or, I, no, I, Mata, yeah, Mata like Nui, the, is that that's from Moana, that, I think. No, 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 Mata Nui is like there's there are many islands in the Bionicle verse. I got very I got deep into the lore, okay. but <laughs> <laughs> but um but uh but i do like um i remember this game um it was probably like a flash sort of game where um you mm -hmm. you start on the island you don't remember who you are yes your name. yes yeah that's the like game first... i'm talking about dude. oh my gosh <laughs> dude that game was the bee's knees it was dude i i remember logging hours on it and also just remember different times where i, I start playing again and i'm like wait 
I'm in the beginning. What happened? And yeah, then, and you have to like dive into the water to go find stuff. There's like, oh, you're literally traveling around this world. Oh man, it was so it. cool. Dude, okay, no, sorry, uh, I totally interrupted you, but that was such a nerd moment. No, I dude, no, that. I love it because I have, I think um, the last time I got to just have any talk about Bionicle was like a random, um, it was AGKO 2019. Um, I'm driving with Ben. We're, we're just like, we're going to mob over. We're like, we're, fuck it, let's drive. And then we're in this like nine hour drive. We just, we go through every topic of talk we can to just keep ourselves going through it. And at one point it was like, oh shit. You like Bionicle too, and then we just had like a a, 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 good, a good combo for a bit, and keep going, kept going from there. Man, and, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> well, this is like childhood stuff, but then um, I'd say around middle school, uh, I got very, I got introduced to um, fixed gear cycling, like fixed gear bikes oh, and yeah, like that track world. So um, I went into all like the different routes of that. Like I I, I was um, with some homies, I was racing at the velodrome, like doing, like trying to learn how to ride. And really, on the like track. up on the wall and so like, where yeah, 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 dude, that's so um, cool. Dude, there's so much tech to it. Like I wasn't the best, but it was, it was such a, it was so interesting. Just like knowing all these like subtleties and workings of like, yeah, how, how did you how get into that? Like, I don't know, you know, okay. So I've always had this like question. It's like, you see all these Olympians that do all these obscure sports. At mm -hmm. what point was that ever a school taught sport that you could be like, oh yeah, I want to sign up for oh. that one. It's like, who are these people that end yeah. up just like doing this sport? How do you get into something like that? Oh man, I think uh, it it's comes from money and uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, no, I wish, I wish I, I wish there was some type of way I could have, I could have just like learned it through a school program or stuff because I would have still totally just went with that if if it was brought to me at a younger age, but uh, it was it was so it was like that. Um, learning how to do tricks on these fixed gear bikes. Uh, eventually, for a bit, also riding FGFS, so like fixed gear freestyle. Mm -hmm. So like, imagine a twenty six inch BMX, but fixed gear strapped. In yeah. No brick, like. That's super cool. So yeah. like doing track stand kind of tricks and stuff. And, yeah. yeah. And then like, a bit, and like kind of like pseudo crossover, like BMX, but on a fixed gear bike type thing. Yeah. Like a, like. Kind of like a trials bike, sort of. Yeah, sort of, sort of. And uh, man, and some people definitely uh, because of like me living in San Diego, people were gnarly on a bike. Like people were gnarly on anything wheel based. Mm -hmm. So it was just really cool to be just like surrounded by that. And yeah. yeah. Did you grow up all in all in San Diego? Was that where you lived um, the majority of your life? No, I've I've moved. Yeah, I've moved a, like a lot, but I, like for the first like twelve years of my life, was just only moving from place to place, like every like year and a half for a bit, and then I my family settled in San Diego, and from fifth grade to to like graduating. So you you lived predominantly in San Diego. Where was your yeah, family yeah. before? Like, where did you guys uh, live before San Diego? So, uh, my family was originally in Japan. That's where... Really? That's where, yeah, yeah. That, my, that's so my, cool. Yeah, my first five years are in Japan. I, look, looking back, I wish I encountered a kendama. Yeah. And then be... be I don't know. Uh, then um, then uh, Illinois and, like, around, like, the Chicago area. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida for a bit. Different that's other crazy. areas in California. And then San Diego. So, you, you went all over and then found found home in San Diego. What was it about San Diego that stuck for you guys? Was it just work for your parents? I, I for for both my family, it was like work, but also because uh, on my dad's side, at least we had he had a big chunk of his family just residing in San Diego. And just I feel like I'm on a family move. It was just better for us to stay kind of grounded for a spot. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it was me and my siblings all being being very vocal about being tired of it <laughs> <laughs> you, you can only pack up your bionicle so many times uh, man, yeah dude i think it, it, it really started because like there was one big move and i was like yo what happened to all my bionicles <laughs> sorry they got left yeah. behind oh man it's like adrian's 23 years old oh, oh no man. where'd they go dude th that that i think that like looking back was definitely one of my first instances of i love taking something apart and putting it back together in a new idea oh interesting yeah because that was something behind bionicle but bionicles bionicles yeah. you you could you could like start to you know you weren't really supposed to take them apart but you could and then you could piece mm -hmm. them together with other bionicles because yeah. they were a branch off of lego weren't they yeah 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 exactly yeah so were you also into lego and like other building um, and stuff like that um, I, I was into just like Lego slightly for a bit, but once I found Di Bionicle and I'm like, oh, there's moving joints and like the gears I could turn and make like, like add movement to these now like 
like pieces that you build mm. and I don't know I thought that was always cool Dude, that's so interesting and you, I can begin to like see a picture that that's how you play Kanama too is you're breaking things down into their movements and their flow yeah. and you were already doing that with other things that you found yeah. same with the fixie the fixie bikes right mm -hmm. it's like I, that yeah. same style of riding is all about control all about mm -hmm. understanding the technicalities of flow and movement because you control everything there's no yeah. coasting it's all no, about no. your control yeah even so to that's so day, interesting uh even to this day uh, I I, I have a hard time being on a bike with a free wheel or coaster because I'm not like, even if there is one, I'm only ever pedaling. It's just, it's hard to kind of get rid of that. Yeah. I could just chill and coast for a bit. Yeah. Sort of feeling. That's so yeah. interesting. Okay. I'm beginning to see the like bricks that are building up to how you play Kanama <laughs> and the way that you process the way that you play Kanama and why it's so unique for you. And, it, and you know, you can see it even in, in your younger years. So I think yeah. that's so cool. Okay. So catch me up then. So in San mm -hmm. Diego, you're going through middle school, you've been playing Bionicles and all of a sudden you yeah. roll into high school and your school is just flooded with Kanamas. What, what's no, going on there? Okay. So, um, it, it's funny, like, look, like after, like, looking back, trying to think about about the, the kind of origin story, there's so many, like, I see, like, so many different layers that just added up to me yeah. eventually picking up a Kendama. So, but, uh, so anyways, like, going back to my freshman year of high school, uh, I only knew there were three people I knew that played Kendama because they were these break dancers that, uh, they'd always hang out this one hall, and then whenever there's any free time of any time of school, they're at that spot, like, doing their, doing their thing. And um, it was towards the end of that year where uh, there was this kind of like school-wide like club fair. Every club like represented a country or whatever like that had food or something representing of that culture. Um, and uh, the breakdancing club, I think they, uh, I can't remember what they picked, but they were all session do like Dama at that spot. And I just remember like, what's that hammer looking thing with the ball? And yeah. So, uh, and then now, now a couple months later, where it's like the new school year, it exploded, where everyone like had a kendama of some way, except for me, because I thought it was lame. I didn't want to do the thing everyone else was doing. Yeah, you were a little, you, you, were, you were keen on trying to stand out and being different. So you didn't want to do yeah. everything the same that everybody else was doing. But then, it, and then like, and even with that mindset, all of my closest friends all picked them up in all different ways. So. I'd like try them out, like I'd see, like try to cup, try to spike, be like, ah, oh, it's done. But see my friends do like over the valley or like whirlwind, hand roll, like just like this like era mm -hmm. of phenomenon. And my, like slowly my, I could definitely see my interest being peaked. Cause at one point uh, in one of my classes, like, cause also at this school, people were slinging damas like <laughs> left and right. Just, uh, and uh, I had a friend sitting next to me in the class saying like, oh, uh, I, I'll give you this Kendama. It was a yellow TK-16. Yeah. I'll give it to you right now if you could downspike. I knew what a downspike was. Never have done it. Missed it. And then he was like, I'll give it to you next week, whatever. And uh, that, so that was like maybe my, my first, first okay. Kendama. But I didn't get into it because a month later, I like dropped it, lost it, didn't care too much. You whatever. lost a yellow it was a yellow TK-16? Uh, it was a yellow TK-16, but in this like two months of having it, because I didn't want my Dama to look like everyone else's Dama, I stained it, you know, that classic move. Did you actually, you painted over your TK-16? Dude, that yeah, thing dude, was so classic now, no, hey? Yeah, cause like, you know, especially for like your first Kandama, you don't know. Yeah, like you don't yeah, know you, what's up. Dude, I gave my first Kandama away to someone. Yeah. I don't even know who, and I regret it now. Cause like looking back, I'm like, it would be really nice to have that behind me for the mm -hmm. review set. It's like. This is my first Kendama. I don't have it anymore. Yeah. It, was a, it was a Caleb Kendama and they're going out of business sale. Oh, what? oh man, they're out of business? Yeah. Um, oh man, that, that's, that's an error. And, uh, and then anyways, uh, this is like maybe July, 2013. I, like, very, like, I almost picked up Kendama, but then the universe told me not nah at the moment. And uh, then, then like a couple months keep going. Uh, it's um, because I'm very deep into like the cycling world. Like I'm still riding my bike very often. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually encountered the deal with it blog way, way ago because of like fix your falling free, fix your freestyle. And I remember seeing my first Kendama ad because it was a teaser promo for the Sour Mash Ken Garden Captain. Yeah. And just seeing the, the hand stippled art on the Tama, I was like, oh, that's super cool. 
and and then like more months come flow by and then it's now December and uh I'm with some family friends at a mall we're we're supposed to be shopping for some like white elephant gift exchange mm -hmm. but then I encounter a kiosk that has all these like generic brand kendamas filling the whole entire booth and uh one short conversation of haggling the price down to ten dollars I got my first kendama <laughs> I, that's like that's the just high school Adrian just hustling the the mall vendor no yeah dude because it was like a I was like, okay, this is 20 bucks. There's no brand. Like I know, I now know at least some of the JKA brands. I'm like, there's no sticker. That can't be, that's nothing like reputable yeah. at least. And then yeah, $10. And I got my other family, for, like two of my other family friends to nab one too. Immediately that night we're session, like we're cups. We're trying to like get all the cups to spike, trying to lighthouse, just trying to yeah. get all this like basic, basic stuff down. And from that, from that point, December 22nd, 2013, was like, it was just, uphill from there just i'm in yeah, yeah. heck yeah uh, you, you hear that folks all you got to do to get cheap dollars is call them out for not yeah. having jka stickers yeah. they'll give it to you for 10 bucks because uh, also um this is now my junior year of high school kendama died already like there's there's no one playing it like all my friends that were really into it they graduated already mm -hmm. and uh yeah and then i'm just like yo i get it now why, why was i was whack a year ago and yeah, so you you started playing when everybody else had quit playing. What was that like? Oh, uh, dude, it, it was weird at first, just because I knew like all like at least the people I saw around just weren't there. But because of the way I am, where uh, uh, when I get into something, I obsessively get into it. Yeah, I'm bringing my dama everywhere. I get like all my close friends to pick it back up, and then it's really cool because it kind of just reignited kendama in like my whole like neighborhood community, uh, like Dama was at the elementary schools, at the middle schools, there was Kendama club. And then it kind of reignited at the high school level. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in my senior year, I ended up starting a Kendama club that was like pretty fun and cool. It was really sick having like 20, 20 to 40 people show up for that. There was that many people in your high school that would show up. Did you yeah. go to a big school? Yeah, I'd say like 3,000 Oh, that's insane. Like, yeah, my school, my, I graduated from my high school of like 300 people. Oh, and my graduating class was like 135 people, I think. It was crazy. That's insane. Yeah, yeah there was no kendamas in my high school that I can remember. Yeah. None. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very, like, looking back, I'm so grateful that, like, definitely what I could think about being so initially passionate about kendama was I me immediately had people to play with, either at mm. school. And then those pe the the people I mentioned, like, that already graduated they started kind of their own group called ken diego and uh like they were kind of hosting their own jams like locally and maybe a week like maybe within the first month i go to like my first jam with people and uh, and that was it you yeah went, so that was a group of people outside of your high school that you started meeting up with it, it was um it was like a group a kind of con combined group of people that went to my high school and people that went to all these different high schools around yeah. San Diego that all just like kind of because early events already started happening. Like these people went to the KG Roots tour of 2013 that I yeah. just missed during all that time. Oh, dang. So you so, missed out on that opportunity of meeting Jake earlier in your life. Yeah, yeah. It, I was definitely uh, all, all these like more established players in my area. I'm just like, oh, man, I want to do what they're doing. They're, they're hosting events, going to going to events, starting yeah. jams. That looks so sick. Yeah, that is super cool. Okay, so you you were playing high school, you graduated mm -hmm. having run this club, you started meeting up with other people. Do any of those people still play Kendama? Do we know any of them? Um, it's oh, oh actually, uh, so, yeah, name um, name drop a few for us. Okay, so shout out Hanson Kendama. Uh, I met him when he was like an, he was an eighth grader in middle school. Oh. I was a, I was a senior in high school. We little was, Hanson. Yeah, it was funny. He was um he was only playing for a couple months, and he was already better than all of us. It was insane. Dude, he's still better than all of us. No, he's yeah, so good. Yeah, he stopped playing for like five years and got into it. And uh, oh my god, <sighs> dude, the kid is home. Yeah, he, he it's he, scary. He, he, he's up and coming. Like check oh, him yeah. out. And also um shout out my friends Sean Tokunaga, uh, yeah. Amran Mercado, Cody May, and they they're still all playing now, and yeah. they're also like they're. Like they were freshmen when I was a senior, but just having just local people to play with is so crucial. Like Kendama is ageless. As long as you have people you have people you're just as passionate with 
It's yeah. really sick to see where you guys grow. I love Dude, it. Absolutely. And I think that's so cool. I think it's really cool to see the journey of people, especially over time and where you've been playing with some of those people for a long time. And I'm seeing more and more people that quit five, six, seven years ago starting to come back into the game mm -hmm. because it's changed so much. Yeah. It's become a, an older culture or a more mature culture or a more aged culture, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it it's more welcoming to someone that's like mid twenties, you know, even in the, in your thirties, yeah. all ages, it's like, we've kind of transcended that barrier of like, this mm -hmm. is a kid's toy. Now, sure. The general public still looks at us like we're a bunch of children, but you know, yeah. wh what are, what are we going to do about that? No, yeah, just keep like, playing. Who cares? Yeah, it's like, why are you going to diss a group of people liking a shared thing? Like there's, <laughs> that goes to any other shared thing with other people. So yeah, um, man. Yeah. Going out to bowling night. Who goes yeah. bowling? Come on. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet other people be like, oh, what? You paid that much for a bowling ball to do what? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's really all the same thing when you break it down to the core pillars. Yeah, so. absolutely. Okay, so, okay. You graduated high school. You were playing mm -hmm. Dama. Did that, what, what did you do after high school? What were your dreams? You know, so, you know graduation. Did you go to college, university? N no, not, not right away because uh, outside of, like, out, right immediately after high school was kind of that point where, I don't like I could like do like some do some classes and stuff but not really with any concrete goal ahead just just trying you know just trying to figure out like what what to do next and and just like at the same time I'm just like working a lot at this point mm -hmm. and all my free time kind of goes to Kendama um, I'm going to all these different events throughout like the SoCal region um if there's something in like Vegas, like p places um, that were closer to me at the time. I try to mob those events. And uh, just once a year, my big event was uh, I'd, I'd save up my money to fly to MKO. So from mm. 2015 up until like, just every year from there, I went to Minnesota. Every was, that, time I was that the only major event that you would go to? Or were there some local um, ones in San Diego that you also went to? Yeah, there was, um, so um, in San Diego, uh, there, there is a, there is, um ken diego the that group i mm -hmm. mentioned previous uh previously eventually i became part of that group uh and um so as a at, like as ken diego we made we had two different um events called socal royale it was really dope had like had we'd like just get everyone from the socal era try to mob down uh vegas homies just uh and it was sick because uh it, even in this time of 2014 15 it, having a, a a small event like that with 130 people is insane that's not a small event that's no, a pretty big event exactly and and i think it's again what i'm super grateful for my come up because i bet i was like because san diego was in a boom when i started playing yeah and i just kind of fe fell into the right cracks at the right time being around all these things i saw matt sweets do c whip in that was my first c whip i saw in person because was was matt sweets fight. yeah and he, uh, this you could tell uh, this is an o OG archaic competition format because it was seven to spike, only JKA Damas. No way. And okay. uh, but I just saw him do C whip like in at one point in his in his line, and I, I've seen the trick in edits, but I've never seen it in person, and it still didn't make sense in person when I first saw it. Interesting, because but for you now, like that seems like such an intuitive thing that like clicks in your head. You understand that. But yeah. back then, for you to not understand that, was that something that, that really sparked something in you? You were like, whoa, it, whoa wait, that's different. Yeah, um, it, it was like a, I, I feel like um, diff, like three, three key things happened around the same time. One was seeing that Sea Whip in person uh, shortly after in that, in that September, that same September, Daniel Robinson dropped String Edit, String edit 1. Mm. And a month later, COYW dropped Hurting Cats. Okay. And, I don't even think I've seen that one, but I've heard that mentioned on the Dominards a bunch. Oh, dude. I uh, need to watch that. Yeah, if you see, um, you could definitely uh, watch that edit and you could see different things I kind of took from that one. It's very specifically, there's like tension, like tension spikes from like spacewalk flow lines. A um, bunch of... I, I got it queued up on my other monitor yeah. here. I'm going to watch it right after. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I highly recommend. Okay, so Hurting Cats by CLYW. Go check that out. Yeah. And, that, and so that Daniel was one Robinson of the interesting And D-Rob. And D-Rob. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, those were big, at least edit video wise, were big, big, like kind of started drifting me towards a certain route of Kendama, I'd say. Yeah. Did you think that you were getting bored with regular Kendama? Like, 
what everybody else was doing? Were you beginning to kind of just feel that tension building up that you were just fitting in or looking too much like everyone else? I think it's a combined, like, there, there's definitely some of that going on. And also, uh, during the same era, uh, this was, like, some, like, newer people, newer players can't, probably can't relate with this, but juggling used to not be a thing at all. Like, mm-hmm. so, um, so, like, that was starting to be, incorp- like, starting to become incorporated to, like, the more main style play, because, uh, so, January 2014, that's like Chris Bosch grip entry 2014. And that's one of my first like ed- uh, other edits I just saw where yeah. I'm like, Hol- holy Kendama is like this now. Yeah. Because before that, I just knew like some Kusa edits and stuff. And mm-hmm. then seeing just like the jump in what kind of how you can play was like, yeah. You know, it's hard that to compare. Would- that was a generation where Kanama really started to separate itself. And I also think that was the years where we lost so many Kanama players because Mm -hmm. it was the year of mass progression for so many people where all of a sudden you separated the people who were good at Kanama and not good at Mm -hmm. Kanama. And And there was no in-between space for people. It was either like you were really good and people knew that. And it was almost unattainable and unachievable for anyone here to catch up to those people. So, so many people just gave up and quit. No, and then the yeah. the faithful remnant like yourself and like me and whoever else kind of just kept playing mm-hmm. through it and yeah. now we're we're back at it yeah yeah dude it's wild like everything comes full circle um because yeah like during that time i'm I'm like i'm like even back then i was practicing my juggles my instas i'm like trying to get just trying to get on those types of tricks and like you, at least for me i realized kind of more like quickly at least what like came to me easier if that it's like the, that's like the best way to explain uh or, or like string tricks in general like i just had more fun to do like there is so much mm-hmm. at least from my perspective like oh there's so much you can do and i don't think i've seen this or i don't think i've seen that and mm-hmm. out and there's uh, like other people definitely in the game it's like also doing stream tricks that i watched heavily uh like um, Benjamin Mastic that I mentioned, I've been watching him play since I started playing. He was he was already the flow god back then. I I, I learned on butterfly taps, like all these like swirl trapeze mm-hmm. swirl type movements, all from watching him. And uh, yeah. D- yeah, did you find it intuitive for you to learn those tricks by watching those videos? Yeah, did you yeah. start to see it and break it down? How how was that for you? Because I think for me, I found that incredibly difficult to do. The only reason that I got into flow was one of my good friends growing up playing Kanama. He was a break dancer and he yeah. just like, he watched Dave Mateo edits like it was nobody's business. And he just picked up flow really, really quickly yeah. and learned it. And I had to watch him mm-hmm. to then figure out what I was doing. And I have such a hard time learning string tricks by watching them uh, via like an, an Instagram video or YouTube yeah. or anything like that. I need to, I need to be there watching like side by mm-hmm. side someone so I can see what they're doing, the direction of everything. But you, you seem to have just figured it out by yeah, watching I, people. No, because at least, um, like, because I wanted to just be, like, say, uh, Bond's edit one, this really sick Kenko edit. I love, that was one of my favorite edits at that time. And I really wanted to do all those tricks. And then I quickly realized, damn, all those tricks are really hard. And, and then, <laughs> They're still really hard. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I, I, it's like, I don't know, like, there, there, there are also some early, like early edits of a. Uh, there's a a yo-yo player that I, I super dope Drew Tets. He made some. He made the flat. He was part of forty four RPM that made the flat pack kendama, mm-hmm. and oh, oh, is that the like cardboard cutout one that you can uh, yeah. fold out into into yeah. a kendama or it's yeah, cardboard it was actually like paper? a thin piece of wood that was bur- burnt out and then he right. cut it into the kendama. But but yeah, exactly. Uh, he, he's like very famous, like very innovative yo yo contribute. That's a lot. Uh, he actually also did the art on my yo yo too. Yeah. And first time I ever saw trapeze ever, like not even on a yo yo. He just did it on a kendama, and I'm like, oh, you could do that. You could catch the ken on the string. Yeah. That's insane. And I don't know, just different, just so many different things. I'd say like you just slowly start to pick up like little grains of whatever, and eventually you just have a big blob of something else 
Yeah, I yeah. can see how the pieces started to form in your head and, and where it started to build up in you. And it looks like there was like a tension that was beginning to build up in you where then all of a sudden it got released into now it, who Adrian is mm. today. So when, when was that turning point for you where you started to like, you were intaking all of this information, watching mm. all this stuff and just breathing it in to where you found that it really became your identity and you were starting to be a creator, yeah. not just I, someone learning it, but creating it yourself. Um, I'd say, uh, at least for me personally, uh, I, I was always like kind of very like very like self-conscious and maybe like even to this day like I have like issues being like a bit doubtful about how I play Kendama and I very early on I focused in on like just recording people and doing like doing that and then um around in 2016 the grip and the grip contest like like for that year popped up and at the time that was like the contest to show like show face like be like like really come out and uh I, I entered, it was my first ever edit, like real, real edit where I sat down, like I downloaded Premiere and everything and figure, figured out how to like do it. Yeah. Um, and even, even it was a two minute edit, but I remember like, oh my God, like I've been filming all month and spent a week trying to, trying to figure out this program to do it. And just seeing people like, I didn't, I, I didn't expect like any type of response from, from it, like, like 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 because straight up I'm, I'm i was like a dama like fanboy like i was like just like kind of nerding out and mm -hmm. people like uh like stod wyatt jake like just people i've been like following and being very inspired by from at that time just the saying like yo dude that edit was sick and and that was like definitely a point for me where at least in my play style i was like maybe i am kind of sick with it you know <laughs> maybe i'm maybe i'm just bored of the yeah. regular play style uh, and at le yeah, at least um, because definitely in that one, uh, I I I'd say like I w I was like pretty creative at the time. I was like just it, it, there was like a more of a a blend between just like creative tech and string tech at the same time. And why mm. I did paint those camo kaizens for you, uh, you gave me some classics at NKR. Uh, thank you. Hey, right yeah. on paint painting damas for Wyatt Bray back in the day. No, that's exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah, because uh. Looking back to like in my like uh, I skipped straight to like I graduated high school, but I started playing in 2013, and I went through different phases of like what yeah. I did with kendama. Like I helped bring um like this kendama retailer to the farmers market outside um uh what is it outside of my high school, and that was like a very like a first like concrete area where we had jams in San Diego, and yeah that that turned into like there became a like two Kendama stores like straight up in in San Diego. In San Diego. Do you think that was mostly directly related to what you guys were doing is that they saw a demand for it, that there were all these Kendama players? Yeah. What, what did I, they carry? Was it like Kendama USA stuff and uh, sweets? Kendama USA, sweets, Chrome, Roots Kendama, like glow can, like they, they realized how dedicated like the people were in the, in the community. So they, they got the Kendamas that like mm -hmm. they knew we wanted to buy and yeah, it's super sick. That's super cool. Yeah. Dude, I wish. I wish Calgary had something like that. We don't, I, I guess, I kind of am that now. Like, I, I do soul canomas, and we got a guy in Edmonton. Yeah. Now, and it's, like, starting to pick up again in, in Canada, and I'm so geeked about it. And it's, like, we're beginning to see it more and more. And, oh, dude, it's, it's, oh. it's sick. It's, like, dude, like, it's really, like, at least from my perspective, like, looking at Kanama now, it's really dope just seeing this, like, pot open up bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and, like, just spreading and leaking to all these different like waves and uh, it just gets me so high. So I love, I love yeah. the spread. Yeah. Okay. So you, you entered the grip contest that year. Mm, yeah. You yeah, had yeah. Film, did you film it all yourself? Yeah. Uh, I probably had one, a clip or two where I had, I had like a, just like a homie hold the camera for me, but a lot of it was just tripod shot me, mm -hmm. me on my bike in my neighborhood with all my camera gear strapped on, like finding all these spots, and just setting up uh, over, over the course of like a month. Oh, we're, <laughs> we're losing Adrian um, here. We're, we're getting some yeah, lag. Yeah, but, but it was all just, oh man. Oh, oh, okay, but yeah, it was just me. It was, it was mainly just me, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So was that the same time where you started to get into filming as well? Because you're you're pretty well known, not only for your play style, but you've also kind of begun to become more well known yeah. uh, for GT Optic 
books and for the film that you've done and for the move, like the edits and the movies that you've created, yeah. Ceranic and Nama. Um, so uh, I very early on from uh, when I was like biking and stuff and also like kind of just skateboarding with my friends too. I was, I was just the, I was like the, the person in our group where my family had a camera. So very early on, I'd be, I just like offered a, I'll film or I'll do it especially because I was never rad at tricks on other things beforehand. And, and then eventually with uh, Kendama, seeing, seeing people's works like Matt Baller, Jake Weens, Colin Sander, Cooper Eddy, and just like, like very quality uh, presentation of Kendama. It started for me wanting to like, just take better pictures of my Kendamas to, I want to show better clips of Kendama, whether it's me playing or it's like other people playing and, it just just kept on going. I, I I love to film people more than I love to film. Interesting. Wait, yeah, that that's really cool. And I think more people a need to film. I need to film mm -hmm. more and and learn to film other people as well. Okay, so you did you have a camera? What were you filming on? Did you make an investment yeah. into it? So um my I I I can remember my timeline of cameras. So, yeah. Uh, the first one was a Canon T3. Like you might have heard the T3i with the flip out screen and everything. Yeah, I got a T2i here. Yeah, it but, doesn't really so, work anymore, but it's yeah, behind this me. Is, um, this is like, uh, the T3 was like the budget version of the T3i, like no flip out screen, no 60 frames per second. Um, <laughs> other other things that made it not great for video, at least for Kendama. And uh, I just quickly realized that Oh man, this isn't what like at least for me at the time. Even even now looking back, where I I very firmly believe that your equipment doesn't matter and you can you could make anything look really great and presentable if you like take the steps to learn how. But me being kind of grommy and being like ah, it looks kind of potato. Give me something else. Uh, I got a I got a T five I, which was like a bit upgraded. I, I saw Chris yeah. Bosch have that camera and I'm like shit, I'll get that one. Yeah. And uh, what is it? And e and even in the span of having that camera, maybe a year, this is like my, this is the, the camera I had for my senior year, basically, where, um, I, like, because Kendama was starting to become more serious, like, I went to my first out-of-state event, which is, it's the first time I went to Vegas for an event called Chillin' and Grillin' 2. Yeah, okay, I don't Kendama. know that one. Yeah, uh, um, like, just being, just going out more and going to MKO, like, oh, man, I... I want to record this better for me because at least for at least for my eye, I'm like ah, it's not crispy enough. And uh, for, when I graduated high school, like as like kind of like, a graduation present for myself after just getting like gifts from my like, family was I bought it. I just bought a full frame Canon 6D, bought bought a bought some like nice glass, and that was like a main camera for a good amount of time till like 2017. Uh, so like my grip entry. Any photos I've shot from that time, uh, any clips I've like in Ben's announce pro announcement, there's like some clips where I'm using that camera too, and mm -hmm. that that was like a beast. And then I left it on top of my car and drove away somewhere and didn't have that camera. Oh no! So yeah. you you lost it, all the footage, all that stuff, or did you have your memory card pulled out? Oh man, I've so like I've always had a trash trash history with them. Um, just taking L's from hard drive losses, memory card stuff, like, oh. like, oh man, Th there's probably like so many lost potential edits from just years past where like, <gasps> I, I almost did the home road contest, lost all my footage, my no. computer crashed, uh, but kind of glad it happened that way too, so. What, um, why do you say that? Um, because, uh, so in 2015, I was like, kind of, it was like a phase in Kanama where, um, I'm, it's like, uh, oh, I'm not, like, in, with a Kanama specifically, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, or like, I knew I was really invested in it, and I kind of wanted to do something with it, but not really knowing what, and, uh, I was, my first sponsor was a, a local brand called Akko Kendamas, and, uh, I, I, it was just like a smaller brand, we were doing... <laughs> local events and stuff but it it wasn't kind of like what i wanted exactly from a kendama mm -hmm. sponsorship and then i saw sweets having this like sponsor me contest going on and i just had to like say like oh i'm i'm gonna leave because i want to try this and the the end because i just, like over the summer i tried filming for this like starting to get clips edited then my computer crashed and i was like oh well i guess i feel like i'm in a blank slate of somehow uh and 
I kind of just hit up some homies around just being like, hey, does anyone have uh, some GTs they're not playing anymore? Because that was a shape I really loved. And mm. at this point in time, I kind of went through different phases of just getting rid of all my damas except for five that I really play. And at this point, I just had no damas anymore. And so I, I bought this, hickory, this used Hickory Sour Mash uh, GT1 and I just started only playing grain theories from that from that point because especially for Damas at the time, um, think stuff like consistency and play was very luck of the draw, uh, or you have to kind of franken 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 your set yeah your set yeah fr- to make create it create a franken Dama or uh, what franken can franken Dama I, I yeah yeah people, and, yeah whatever it is and I was I, even now I'm kind of I'm big on that but. At that mo- moment, I'm like, oh, man, none of these kendamas feel right. They don't make me want to play. And whatever about that GT1, like, sold me. And I don't know. Like, I feel whatever came to me, I just had a thought, like, if I if I were to ever be sponsored by anyone, Grain Theory would be kind of cool. And <laughs> Yeah. Were, were, did you care about sponsorship at that time? Was that even a frame of thought? Was, um, did you want that? I, I own. I, I did in ways for like um I, I I was very um very interested in and like I loved how for like certain companies were very much able to provide for their players even just like providing travel like see, mm-hmm. seeing seeing these trips other like companies would go on and seeing the dope videos were they're very they're very enticing for for those young mm-hmm. eyes and and I totally. was one of them for sure and. Oh yeah, and just just being able to like the opportunity to travel and meet more people was just such a that's what I wanted to do, and so I I definitely like went towards that route, and also free damas like yeah, who especially want... in this like this grommy age, I'm like free damas never sound bad. Even no. now, free damas don't sound bad. <laughs> Never, man. The yeah. price of damas just keep going up. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're only going to keep going. Well, I mean, there, there are cheap and affordable damas mm-hmm. that people can get. But we're getting into, like, the collector's era of kanama yeah. where there are, like, the entry-level kanamas. But now we're seeing lots of these, like, one-off kanamas that are being created. Mm-hmm. Thinking of, like, uh, GT does it. Uh, yeah. Terra uh, kanama has been on that yeah. train um, like crazy. Da- oh, uh, just today dropped all the 28 days of Thomas. Um, so check it out, everyone. I haven't seen that. Er- Eric did some crazy work on that. Dude, that rubber yes. paint is sick, by the way. Dude, uh, and Eric, he is such a good guy. Uh, we, yeah. we did an episode with him recently. I love mm-hmm. him so much. He's yeah, a beauty. Uh, I love that episode. That was like, prop- that was like, I, wa- I, I fully finished it like a day or two ago. I was like, <laughs> oh man, I fucking, lo- I love Eric. He's, he's so dope. He's, <laughs> It's all about the origins, and I just love it. Yeah, the guy just has a passion for for diving into the story of mm. of where the Dhamma comes from. It's so cool. Uh, he's a beauty. But okay, so you you kind of went down this journey. You got into filming. You're like, okay, I I'm getting this skill set. I'm trying to establish myself as someone different. You're learning mm. how to film. You're learning how to do different styles of tricks, and you're kind of heading on this path towards who you are today you know this unique character in the kanama community adrian esteban string wizard string maneuvers whatever you want to call him the guy who literally sells his own strings because he's branded himself as the string guy yeah. uh, did you realize what you were doing and that you were beginning to gain momentum and i think one of the pivotal moments for for you at least in what an outside perspective might see is when you were uh, the the nominee and the recipient of the Downspike Award for oh, what man, was it, yeah. Ro- Standard of the Year, Rookie of the Year? Or... It was like uh, I think it was like sta- yeah, like standout player or break breakout breakout player, player, player of the year. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, oh, when man. did you realize that it was becoming more than just a game for you? Like where it started to oh. actually become real and something that you started to identify sincerely with? Yeah. So um, because like. Like like I was saying before, I've always had like confidence conf- confidence issues, which is like my own like kendama play. And I'd say even when I first got on Green Theory in 2017, I'm like, why'd they put me here? Like like I- I'm just like I-, I like this is exactly where I want to be. But I'm like, oh my god, like I don't feel like I fit in. <laughs> Did you feel like an imposter? Oh, dude, yeah. I I and I think I still struggle with like imposter syndrome with like different things. It's just uh. Why do you think that is? I, I think it's just um, in in some like at least when it comes to specifically my kendama play, part of me just always thinks that like, 
it's just a string trick like it's mm -hmm. it's or it's like i think because that's kind of the the atmosphere i grew up kendama in about those types of tricks where uh um people oh shout out world i remember that i'm glad that happened uh for those of you tuning into the audio, what he's referring, uh, Donald Wills in the chat says, Adrian taught him C-Whip and then won the award, not but five minutes later. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but oh, shoot, I, I got my, I, I lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, what is it? Yeah, you, I, I, you were ta talking imposter syndrome, like feeling, feeling oh, like you, you maybe didn't deserve to be where you were. Yeah, because um, especially like, um, so like, Jacob, Jacob Blow, well, like, I don't think, like, at the time, we pr we got on GT around the same time, but I was like, oh, dude, he deserves it. And and then, um, what is it, Ben got on GT a about a year before, and I remember, uh, I was like, oh, man, that was a good-ass pick. Ben, ben Harold, like, Ben Harold, and just being like, oh, man, I'm not, I'm not that type of player. Like, especially, like, people like Stodd and uh e eli corey uh hong boots at the time all mm -hmm. these people on gt they're they're on i saw them all like this and i'm just like uh i film that's how i saw myself yeah did you yeah. did you when gt asked you to be on their team what did you think that they wanted from you like why or oh. did you see yourself as like oh they just want me to film stuff it's because uh, i have this skill set did you think that that was the reason they wanted you on the I, team? i think at least like for me personally i i definitely think at least initial pick leaned more on those skills like because I'd say I still had like an, uh, my like style of play that was still more unique or just like my own thing but e even for me I valued more of my skills of like presenting things rather than ex than like the tricks I did themselves and mm. I, I guess I just kind of like just stuck around and I yeah, what, just yeah. <laughs> what was that like for you feeling like you didn't belong on the team did you did you feel like you were left out or or did they welcome no. you like what, what what was that no. like for you in the team dynamic side of things oh so i like, know the team the team was great like welcomed me in right away uh like just all all love and stuff from the start it, it was always just me being like uh man like I remember that the E uh, one one example I could think of clearly was uh it was we were filming for the E one edit in um in Oakland and there was um uh, like I, I believe the squad at the time was like Alex Dupont Christian Einetter me Ben and I, I believe Jacob came out for a couple couple of days too but uh, oh and Stodd of course and mm -hmm. and Matt Rice Jake the owner so a uh, pretty pretty hefty squad just all out in Oakland at the time and. We're filming the promo for the the, the E one the first the first drop stitch in Roku. That was the yeah the Roku and the stitch yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember just especially during then like people are laying I'm seeing people lay down tricks left and right like I'm behind the camera seeing people lay down tricks left and right, and it, like every time it was like oh Adrian you go hit something and uh, two hours later of of no lacing I'd be like ah I'll film you guys. Mm. And just, I, but I feel like it's very much like a. It was always maybe, like, now with like a more more mature, I guess like introspective look at it. I was just being so so hard on my like I I was like very undervaluing myself I guess in that sense. Yeah, yeah. well I can I can see that right, and I think so many people probably fear that as well. I I think, in today's landscape particularly to become a pro on a team or to be sponsored by a company, I imagine myself, like if not, not that this would ever happen. I, I don't really want to be sponsored, but if I were, I don't think I'd belong. Like, I feel like I would be in the same boat. I'm like, what do I have to bring? You know, I'm, you know, look at all these other people that are so good and I can devalue my own skill sets, even mm -hmm. though I am maybe unique and you can really beat yourself up over that. And I think that's yeah. harmful, right? That actually is no, for sure. less helpful for you instead of actually saying like, whoa, wait, wait, this team wants me because I actually bring something unique yeah. to the table and own that and, you know, look at yourself and say like, no, I guess I, I guess I have stood out and they do mm. want me instead of beating yourself up being like, Oh, they, I, imposter syndrome is a killer, man. Like long yeah. story short, it's just a killer that really beats you up. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I've, I've definitely been struggling like, and learning, just learning how to just like better, like deal and balance, balance with and just knowing when it's like, no, nah, man, like, I, I'm just like thinking in this sort of negative loop and just being able to recognize myself being like, nah, you chill. And like, and just kind of like be, being able to at least step back and like breathe and have a more clear ice view of 
whatever is like more actually happening than whatever my head perceives to be happening. Yeah. So yeah. Deep. Dude, absolutely. That, yeah. I mean, we could, we could rest on that for a while, but yes. let, let's take a little break here and oh, yeah, let's yeah, hit some sure. questions, yeah. questions from the chat. And then let's dive into kind of modern day Adrian. Let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the GT story. We'll talk about the pro mod, um, some of the edits. I, I was doing some uh, deep diving on Ooh, YouTube okay. earlier today, and I found some of your old edits under your personal account from like two, three, four years ago, and just seeing some of the like early development of Adrian Esteban yeah. filming. And dude, why don't you upload on your own channel anymore? Oh, dude, actually, um, I'm starting, I'm like, I've been like working on doing that just because uh. I, like I've told you, I've been filming for so long, like taking photos. I've yeah. been looking, like, I've been looking back at my hard drive, starting to pull things out because I'm like, oh man, I have, I have videos of people I don't see anymore, or like people like way younger, like or, and it just accumulates over time. And I just want to drop like, just like little like nostalgic bits where it's like, here's like, um, what I'm working on right now is just some um, all the different times I've spent in Vegas. From there's like a big chunk of the Chrome Takeover LV event in 2017 and the last AGKO in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I just want to like, just start like getting these out in some way because I'm, I'm the type of person where like, I just, I'm so sentimental to all these different memories and stuff. And I want to share them in like a way I feel like it should be shown. Cause I just hate, like, I hate things that just get lost forever in the algorithm, the feed, the whatever. Mm -hmm. And just, just something for, even if it ends up being just for me to like easily be able to look back on. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Do we need more documentation in the canonical community of just the things that are happening, the stories, mm -hmm. the no, photography, videography, you name it's, it. It's so key because uh, definitely like, if it wasn't for the people doing it when, when I was like coming yeah. up, like who knows like who knows exactly dude i feel like i'm I'm like now getting to play my part a little bit in documenting the stories and the journeys through review yeah. and you know bringing on you know the influencers of today so that the people of tomorrow can look back at the stories that built up to what mm -hmm. what is now uh and, and i'm excited for that journey to, to come our way in, in a couple of years so yeah. yeah man we need more of it more yeah. no I yeah like, more. like what like what people have said in previous review episodes like this is kind of like like we were in a pre-era of Kendama till like maybe 2017. I'd say that's where I, I draw the line, like I clear the fine line. It was and then the we, early adopters phase. We're in the early majority now. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's so like, like oh, yeah. no one knows what's coming up, but like, it just feels like things are going up. In oh, it's gonna be big. Whatever, whatever way that is. So it's yeah, just it, exciting times, really. Oh, it yeah. is going to be big. All right, let's hit some questions here from the chat. We got Patreon subscriber mm, Brett Walters, longtime listener of the show. Brett's the homie. Absolute yeah. homie. Another filmer in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Love the guy. Guys, go give him a follow. If you want this kind of a shout out and this is much love for me, yeah. just go go join the Patreon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dude, dude, no, yeah, dude. Support Patreon. Support people providing dope content like yourself to like do this for the game because this isn't like, this work, this is work, bro. Like this is like, he's, you're doing out the gracious of your heart, providing a free platform to view it in. But like, dude, you got it. Like, like how the Kendama community supports our artists. You support your, your creators and everyone just like helping contribute to this game we all love. And, we all out here just trying to play ball in a cup. Yeah, fun. exactly. And if we like, can make it, make it accessible for other people to do it by, by helping get more creators active and out there, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brett Walters wants to know, what is the string trick you learned that opened the doors to your current style of play? Also, uh, second question he asked, how do music and fashion inspire your play style? Okay, so um, a big a big trick I learned was, uh, people call it C-whip. I just call it whip because I think the C doesn't mean anything. Uh, and uh, so, bah! like this trick was, was so big because like before you like for anyone that's learned that trick there's no tricks that are like that in kendama nothing precursing like like leading up to it so you like like i know for me and probably a lot of pe other people you're just like how does that work like do i whip the string out like this to make it catch somehow or mm -hmm. whatever but it's not an intuitive trick for most no, people not I, at all 
it took me a bit to to get it and like watching your play style it, i think you this I was ch- chatting with Joe about this last week. Mm-hmm. Watching yo-yo, it's really hard to learn yo-yo because it's mm-hmm. not intuitive. You can't you can't break it down into small steps very easily. Yeah, uh, yeah. or at least you'd have to be a really good educator to do that. Mm-hmm. You have to like kind of play with it and allow it to flow, and it just tangles so much, and you mess up so much, uh, mm-hmm. and so it's hard to learn it. But see what yeah. for you was was the trick. No, yeah, it d- definitely because like I remember uh, what is it uh with with that trick specifically at, at, at that event i told i i mentioned chilling and grilling in vegas this is like january of 2014 or or well, maybe uh, uh 2014 15 mm-hmm. and i fir- i just first like um someone at the at that event um he was actually part of pure kendama the og team dylan westmoreland used to be part of like shut them out uh mm-hmm. this kid uh, i forgot his name but he 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 was like i could i could do it but 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 like just straight up and he's just trying to explain to me uh like where you hold the tama in your mm-hmm. hand and just like uh you pull up like a lighthouse and you, and he's like and you do this like in very yeah. not very explained well but enough for me to see at least see what is happening if, mm-hmm. even if the words didn't match and i just had this like mental image in my head just pull up and do this and yeah. And in my photography class in my senior year of high school, I'd never, I'd never do work. I'd just be sitting there with session dama. Just and, see whipping under the desk. No, just... yeah, no, I, I was always playing above the desk. People saw me <laughs> play all the time. And, but I just remember when, like, I'm just like, I'm like joshing around, like at my desk and I pull up for my first whip. And I'm just like, oh, like, I'm like, yeah. oh shit. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, middle of class, you're like in the middle of an exam. Adrian's yeah. like, oh, I got I, it. I, I'm making breakthroughs to my progression, <laughs> like in that corner over there. And oh, oh man, like, and and it took me maybe another month to hit it again because I was like, oh man, that was a fluke. How did I do that? And, yeah, <laughs> I, I just imagine your teacher going, you know, oh, Adrian, you're in detention, but did you see the trick? Yeah, no, dude, I, I, dude, I'd lace in front of him. I'd lace in front of him. Like, I did my first like five turn up. Uh, lunar because you had a five turn to lunar dude shout out the wormhole on my first gt1 oh, yeah of course of course yeah but i just went like bah and slapped like no other yeah yeah like um gold gold azora tama that was my set oh my time. gosh that's and, crazy that's yeah. on that slick tama yeah dude like it, it was like there's like even for me like i feel like sticky to me is like sour mash or nick sturgios paint yeah. uh like stuff like the sticky clear now, that's just tacky to me. And that's that's exactly <laughs> what it was. It was just tacky. Yeah. And man, dude, I could, dude, I could go I could go on just about the progression of Kendama because like, yo, oh, yeah. things, things wild. Yeah, we, we can maybe dive into that a little bit after. Uh, okay, Br- Brett also wanted to know how do music and fashion inspire your yeah. play style? Because you, you are a styling guy. Like you, you're big up on the style. You've always had fresh cuts, fresh, dude, fresh swag. Man, your I, edits not I, only look good, good, but you look good in them. Dude, oh, dude, oh man, I, I'm always bad at taking compliments, but just th- uh, thank you. And that's sick. Um, <laughs> uh, for uh, at least for me, uh, I'd say with with music first of all, um, a, a very direct thing it does for me is uh, it gives me a, a very solid tempo to follow. And I'm I'm always playing, listening to music because uh, I just I just love music. And, and what, and what all, kind of music? Oh many 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 kinds uh it's it's a, it's like a i feel like in general all my interests i don't just like that like pinpoint too much on like one thing i mm-hmm. like I, I try to expand and see how much i i can learn or like appreciate and at, at least like core things i love like about music i like is um uh I, at, least, at least right now i really like very crazy noise industrial like like ambient like sounds where um it's like crazy distorted and just very it's so so feel like just feels like very can you can you give us a verbal example for for the audience oh shoot uh (laughs) no 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 no, no. you have to make the noises oh uh, (laughs) just you uh, don't have to do that um imagine uh i could explain it like imagine the sound of a plane crashing for like 45 minutes with like (laughs) i can't imagine playing (laughs) condom to that I, I um, pictured you playing, listening to like classical music or no, to like vibey lo-fi while yeah. you're doing your string tricks, not plane crashing into concrete no, no, kind of no, stuff. No, no, that's where uh, that's where I'm gonna get at. Like I like for me, um, 
like very playing kendama and like when i'm really in that like when i'm really just like in it playing like my my head just takes me wherever it goes and it just kind of comes with my like with my taste of music where it's like very uh like like i just explained just like one one type of music i very much enjoy uh I love jazz. I love all forms of jazz throughout like time, mm. like the, the the progression of that in itself, from like the er, like from the early nineteen hundreds all the way to like modern day. I love uh, yeah, like the, the rap R and B, like Anderson yeah. Pack, that kind of stuff. Yeah, like and to even just like uh, I love, I love straight up classical music. Like Chomsky is one of my favorite artists. Bro. Heck like, yeah! Uh, like I'm vibing just, with them strings. No, like I I just I um. Like I, I can never say like there's a very specific thing I like. Um, I just know when I vibe to it. Okay, so I mean, how does it, yeah. how does it impact your play style? So um, so at least like the way I like to play. Um, sometimes like I'll have a kind of a rough trick or like a rough just like idea I wanna I wanna show in some way, but uh, the music dictates dictates how I'll do it. Like sometimes like there's like very big sounds or very like um impactful points i'll do the trick big then or like say uh when i do my whip tricks i don't keep it all right here i like it expands out and i pull it back and catch the whip sort yeah. of thing just uh um i feel like uh, the music will just like it will dictate the emotion i'll try to like show in my play mm -hmm. or or whatever sometimes it's just like i need sometimes the music like you, you know, sometimes you just hear a song where you're like, oh, that's a good, like, you hear, you, like, you're able to predict how the song is going and you're just trying to time all your stuff. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Dude, I do that all the time. Um, well, Adri Dama or Adri, yeah. I, I can't remember her name, um, but it's like Adri Dama on, on Instagram. She recently put a video out with mm -hmm. uh, ILI song. I, I don't remember. It's like, I like it like that or, or what. I don't yeah. know. She just put it out and I like listened to that and I was like, oh. I got to go outside and film and like mm -hmm. listen to this song and play Kendama too, because I like can see where the beats are coming. And I like, yeah, it just like gets your mind playing in a different way. And you, mm -hmm. I get so inspired by a song and watching an edit to go and film something yeah. similar that hits to that vibe. No, I'm really glad you brought that up because like, that's def like, definitely like the, seeing these edits, like going back to that, like the music choice is so key because sometimes those songs will make you want to play it. Like the same yes. with like BMX vids or, or like, skating vids like th that soundtrack is so crucial because before the the age of like instant gratification like social media instagram whatever like people waited on these videos to come and that was mm -hmm. their juice like that, that and like, you would rewatch it and rewatch it and rewatch yeah. it i probably have like 500 streams of d westy's downtown days like oh, not even class, joking classic ones september classic ones. Yeah. literally plays in my head every time i, I play kendama because of how many times i've seen that video mm -hmm. it's ridiculous yeah, dude, like, it's, uh, uh, for me, one of it's uh, Cooper Eddie Pro, pro Edit. Yeah, um, of course. Like, sipping, sipping on some scissor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, like that's so, like, I don't know. Like, dude. Music, is, music is key to, like, it's, like, all part of the package. Yeah, of all opinion. the edits that you've, you've watched or made or, you know, that you've seen, which edit stands out as, like, having the best musical choice to go along with it? Like, the one that gets stuck in your head oh my more God. than any. That's so hard, but... uh definitely a, a fringe case that first part that first song yeah real like that one really gets me going because like the first line is i don't chase nostalgia no more and i'm like damn right i don't like <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to hit like it makes me want to like just hearing that line it's like let's do something new like let's mm. let's just go or, or same or same thing with the uh, to's like in most recent memory to's edit like mm -hmm. doom 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 do, and then like yeah well, I, I really loved um, the, what was it, from Jake Weens, his uh, 50, Fallen 50. Fall 50, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what the song was, but it had this, like, theatrical, cinematic style mm -hmm. music playing in the background that, like, made me feel like I was falling into a story. And mm -hmm. I was just watching something play out, and it was such a beautiful yeah. picture. No, no. So cool. Yeah, that's what I love, especially about like, just because I send a lot of footage to Jake and then Jake will then edit that footage. Like sometimes I'll, I'll be like, oh, here's some whatever we filmed, like not really thinking how it's gonna look. And then he starts laying down the soundtrack, the sound design. And I was mm. like, oh my God, like you made it turn so much sicker. And, and now, and, and I'm always like, yo, what's the song? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Shout out to the people out there that have good song selection for their edits. Yeah. You guys, you guys make your edits better. There's like, if you want a good edit, you have to have good visuals. Mm. The tricks are like not even the most important piece, but they're no, very no, helpful. No, no, no. It's like good visuals, pretty good tricks, great music. You have a banger of an edit there. Yeah, because like, like, yeah, there's like just like there's like yeah, there's three key things, and you you like you and story. You got to have story. You, you got to yeah, bridge it all, then, bring it all together. And then you as a player, you just figure, you you just turn those dials to get the balance that fits for you, and you're gonna turn out with something you're you're pretty stoked on. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, man, dude, I gotta get pumping those edits out soon. I've been I've been lazy. No, dude, yeah, like it only gets easier the more you do it. Like that, that I think that's the way the way to go. Like I feel like some people hold themselves back, wa wanting to make it some extreme like production, and I could see that with how edits are going, but. Yeah, it definitely creates a like a paralysis, I think, for so many new players. Mm -hmm. It's like when I go on YouTube and I look at and I search up like Kanama edit and I see, you know, Adrian Esteban's string theory edit. It's like, oh, OK, so that's the bar that I need to meet to be able to like have an edit do well in, on YouTube. And it's like, OK, well, maybe maybe not. Maybe you mm -hmm. should start smaller and not hold yourself to a standard that someone else has set. Sure, you yeah. might not get as many views. Maybe you do. Who knows? Who cares? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. No, yeah. Are you learning? Are you growing? Are you yeah. having fun with it? I, yeah, I no, get caught in the comparison trap all the time. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I feel that. And that's like a thing. Like I, like, like I said, like I get so stuck in. And one, one thing at least that's been helping for me is uh, like... I'll, I'll, before I like maybe like I'm done editing whatever or like I'm at this part where I'm like kind of reviewing it and I just ha I just have to ask myself do I like it and and like and that's that's just like where that's like where like it should like end for a lot of people because like do you like it yeah then Lord like what's the issue mm -hmm. or it's like and it's like if no then you could work on it whatever mm -hmm. and I yeah just like, I feel like it, it hurts me whenever I see people, like, I, I got mentioned on a couple episodes ago where people see their tricks and like, oh, man, check out the, uh, throw away this, like, this uh, quick sloppy or whatever trick. Or, and I'm just like, no, nah, dude, you probably, dude, you probably liked it. And that's why you're sharing it. But now you're just, now that you're in the, the platform to show it, you're just, people are just like, oh, man, it isn't that great. But if you wanted to share in the first place, like, that's, that's all that should matter. Yeah, man, absolutely. Okay, let's hit the last piece yeah. of this, oh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. and then we got a lot of questions to get through. So no, yeah, I'll, I'll we'll, get through it. We'll, we'll blitz I, through some of these, but uh, to kind of wrap up Brett's question here, um, what about fashion? How does fashion play a role oh. in in your play style? Okay, so for me specifically, uh, I love wearing a bunch of color and everything, but I try to like. I also care about my string showing, so you, you people see me just film in darker clothes generally, mm -hmm. just for visibility. But a key thing for me. Um, Although I just like I like patterns, I like graphics and all these other things. I just love big, comfy, and keeps me warm. Like, <laughs> like that. That's that's really like. Where Where do you shop? Are you like a thrifter, or do you buy designer? Uh, no, yeah, I I like. Dude, I don't even remember the last time I like bought like new clothing. It, that, like, um, I I tend to just uh like if if I do buy stuff, I thrift. Um. Uh, I'm so grateful for like PDOX and Grain Theory for just providing half of my clothes. Like, yeah. <laughs> and um, if anything, I just love to um, like do something to my clothes. Like my pants, I'm I'm not like the tallest dude, but I'm also like pretty skinny dude. So I like I'll cut my pants to a certain length or have a certain fit because I just dig it. And yeah, and often I'll just like I just love wearing big baggy clothes because uh, I like to move around a lot when I'm playing Dama like does that not get in the way of your string ever like your clothing um um it, it only it only depends for certain tricks like if I'm doing broadways and stuff where I'm spinning I kind of just want to wear t-shirts and like pants yeah. but like what I'm doing uh, I'd say uh the only thing I I don't you'd probably never see me film in is wearing a jacket like I, I could just never I could never do it mm. yeah it's That's just fair. I feel just like constraint or yeah for me my string will hit my clothes at certain points that I don't want it to yeah, like sometimes, sometimes I'll get kind of like twisted up with my tricks and having so we're losing losing okay. Adrian again here real quick I think oh, he's coming sorry. back yeah, yeah 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 I got you you're good okay word yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so it does. You obviously your clothing does does play an important role in your life. Do you do you see how you dress 
uh, impact your play style or your kendama play? Does that uh, influence your creativity at all? Actually, no, I, I wouldn't say so. Just because uh, I'd say like, honestly, like the way I've been dressing, I've been kind of dressing this way since like middle school. Sure. It just It's just like a new like, oh, uh, replacing this printed floral looking button up with a newer old vintage. Yeah. <laughs> but like, like it's, it's, it's always me just like having um, the same way you'll see a kendama just get reiterated in the V1 too. Yeah. Like I'll just find like equivalent clothing that like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, I fit XL now. Get the XL, ver try to find something like that, whatever. Sure, sure. I'm, cool. I'm never really too picky. I just like, if it fits me and I'm cool with it, like I'll put it on. Yeah, cool. Okay, let's hit up a couple of questions here. Quick yeah, answers yeah. on these ones. Uh, yeah, quick. There's a couple questions regarding the Adrian Esteban strings that people want to know about. Okay, uh, uh, Someone wanted to know, you know what, uh, Jubaka90 wants to know, what's your favorite string color you've made? Uh, it's right here. It's that Luzu fade. Yeah, um, show it to us. So uh, so um, I'm working on, this will be out pretty soon, probably next week. So it's a, so I, I had these strings where it starts red on one end. Yeah. And then it fade, like I've dyed each one of them. So they, oh, it's hard to tell because I have a flash, right? Yeah. Or like a light right there. But it, but fades it has, to black. Yeah, it's a slow gradient from like red to a darker red, getting darker up until it just becomes full black. Yeah. And I just love this one a lot for, from a playing perspective. I never knew string tracking was so important. Like, you know how like say even like you're juggling whatever, you now only see a Thomas side and a Ken side, which is so, so fire. Does that, when, has that helped you with your play a lot? Yeah, it's helped with me because like, I'd say like juggles and that type of tech is more my weak spot, but being able to just like, I'm not like lost trying to look for everything. It's just, it's like I um, often um, like I have I like Thomas that are red or have some sort of red, so that will always be like the red sides to my Tama and the right. black sides to Ken, and it only makes me like pinpoint on the one part I want to look at. Sure, yeah, and that makes I, total sense. That's cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just I love that, and also uh, depending on how you cut it, um, this this fade line is really nice for a pinch point or like oh yeah because you could get it right in the middle and then you know exactly where center is because of mm -hmm. where it fades no, have exactly. you thought about doing a full-on like hard split instead of a fade like no, half yeah, red I half actually, left um, I, wait uh, i'm gonna pull something up real quick that's actually so sick i've never thought about that but you could literally yeah. have string targeted in different measurements you could have like a two-thirds red one-third black so that way you yeah. know exactly where certain pieces of the string dude okay that that's mind-bending mind-bending yeah. to me dude that's and, so cool and, and that idea all stems from uh, this like this joke this running joke i've had with ben because when i when 2018 um when i first moved up to northern california we're sessioning a lot and Ben's the type of player where like they get a knot, ah, oh, whatever, I'll just keep it in until I have to cut it off. I can't imagine Ben being that guy. Ben just leaves his knot in. Yeah, like, it, it, like, no. some, it's, like it's one of the things where it's like, you'll get it out if you're able to, but if it's like stuck, you're like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll just play it. But anyways, he'd always, whenever people would ask, be like, dude, why are there so many knots in your string? They're tracking knots. And at, <laughs> at this time is, is when he's like really starting to start goon pinching, like, like when it was like just him doing yeah. all this stuff still. And it was one of those things where people, like, even me, before I knew it was a joke, I just believed it because it uh, <laughs> uh, checks out, I guess. So, yeah, like, I mean, if it works for you, like, I can't. Yeah, if it works <laughs> for Ben, everybody else will do it. <laughs> Dude, yeah, exactly. And, but yeah. Okay, so that's so interesting. It's dope. Yeah, okay, yeah. that opens up a whole new world. That, mm -hmm. that, that's fun. That's fun to think about. Okay, uh, yeah. someone wanted to know, what goes into the process of making a string pack? And are there any okay. aspects of changes that you've made in the past to make the AE strings the best in the game. So okay, like so, uh, the dude. iterations. Yeah, uh, shout out. This is Humu, Humu dot Dama. Huma, Huma dot Dama. Okay, so shout out. Um, so for every part of the string, like I, I just do all of it from like the packaging from like, I, I, I have, there's, so it starts off from, I, I found a really sick string supplier, just like, I spent like a few years, even before the string pack things, like just trying to find good string for me to play with. Mm -hmm. And, but so anyways, uh, I, I found the string supplier. I, I, I got like, I get all the rolls and the colors. Like I'm, I'm picking these colors out too, because so, like the same way with like my clothing, I'm like, I'm for aesthetics, I'm very picky about what, and 
I have this like whole color palette thing. I'm I'm choosing all of those. I'll order these like pat or just like these dense dense rolls, and I'll cut each of them down into each string is about thirty inches. Don't know the centimeter. Sorry. Mm -hmm. American. Yeah, uh, it's Canadian folks. We'll we'll have to do some math in the in the yeah. post edits. We'll, I, we'll... I believe it's oh man, I measured it in centimeters, but I just I forgot. But it's around like eighty. Around eighty. Okay. It's hefty long though. Hefty. Yeah. So um uh so I'll start with just cutting all the strings down. Um uh, same place where I source all these uh US made organic cotton bags. Like all the string bags are that. Yeah. Uh for I want I just less plastic like in general yeah, you don't dude need it. less plastic i i listened yeah. to a podcast or and read some articles recently about plastics are, are impacting our, our bodies yeah no <laughs> there's dude, a it's... there's a dude there's a funny article and it's scary if it's legit but yeah. apparently the amount of plastic that we we keep in our lives and that we're ingesting because our fruits and vegetables and all that stuff's coming to plastics mm. dude we're, we're getting smaller genitalia we're getting no, yeah. smaller taints and our lifespans are decreasing. Yeah, it's not it's, good. No, it's even to a point where the food we're eating, they have plastic, like fish, like there's some plastic in it because they're in the, oat. like it's all yeah. bad. Though. I like, know, man. Oh, it's, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. But, any, uh, but anyways, uh, getting back to the pack. So, um, <laughs> uh, so with each of these bags, I'll both like stamp out, like wh whatever, um, like say it's for my own packs where I have this logo drawn up by Damon, this the AE with the strings around it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll stamp each of those bags or say for like these collabs, like yep. like we'll work on art and try to like both make a stamp and sticker, ordering all those, like pa getting, like stamping the bag, putting the stickers, getting all the, the beads, the bearings. The bearings are so expensive when they're not the, like even the, the slightly bigger ones are way more expensive than the tinier ones. How much? How much does one of those cost, generally speaking, like for a bearing? <sighs> I guess you're not buying them one at a time, but you're probably yeah, buying yeah. them in so, a big bag. No, yeah, because dude, I buy the bearings in like several thousand. Like I the last time I bought it or had to order some was uh, like a month or two ago, and I bought. I kind of just preemptively bought five thousand to. <laughs> That's so many. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I like for for me with the strings at least like i i just i'm i'm stoked that people just love them so much and i'm always just trying to get be, for um leading to the end of that question i've just been working on trying to be able to make more string packs at a time and just kind of setting up my own like kind of home setup like i do everything at home like yeah. i'm i'm using the desk i do all the string stuff right now yeah for, to put my ipad on for this and i'm just like hunkering down um Oh, dude, I'm gonna go back and forth, but uh, going back to patching the strings. Um, so I'm like stamping, filling it with the stickers, like getting the beads and bearings. And with each, uh, after getting all those like bundles of strings, um, like I'll, I'll like grab, I grab the amount I need, like tie them in the bundle. And what I do to every single pack, uh, tying back to, I just want less plastic out there and. Just like, just more people just start playing right away. Uh, I burn every single tip to have that tiny tail. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it takes a bit, but it all just ends up to, you don't need a stringing tool. You just yeah. pop it in. Um, it's so smart. It's actually so helpful too. Yeah. The only it's what, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, so what What happens when, obviously, if someone cuts it down to a preferred size, less mm -hmm. than what it is, then obviously they have to cut it and they might need a string tool. But dude, you, you just got to like suck on that sucker, get it all moist, and then yeah. just twist it and then slide that thing in. Yeah, the, the key is just, uh, you just like, at the very, very tip of the string, like, boop, and then you just Isn't that like, quick? And then you just yeah. use your finger? Do you do, you do the like... No, dude. Uh, I, I probably dude, this guy's got calluses. He just oh, he just no, straight like, pinch. I have no fingerprints here and here. <laughs> like, He's just getting himself ready for a life of crime. Yeah. But but it's it's sick though because like I, I remember at first though like I'm like oh man making strings is actual pain and then now I'm just like uh, I'll uh like, like this last week I've been like just pumping out more strings like trying to get them out. No, he um, uses a blowtorch. Yeah. Oh, dude. No, I, I've tried different methods of trying to get a consistent flame. It sucks that the lighter in hand ends up being the best way to do it. Yeah. So it's like a, it's tedious, and I have no way to get around it at this point without getting more people to help me, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. Uh, 
like yeah, yeah just burning each of these strings getting this dope like and now now i have this like it's like when it's burning time like set up my review uh that's how i listen to all the episodes and just while you're stringing yeah yeah that, that's super cool okay so you've done you've done a bunch of collabs with with people who have you all collabed with and do you have any that are coming up that you're able to, to tell us about yeah so um i've i've collabed with a rage quit um we, we've done like our first pack that like the kengar it has like the, the little, yeah the purple one yeah yeah and um so um we're, we're working on the second one and i'm about to get out like super super soon um it's like this rage quit pack where it's like oh boop, sick boop. Uh, what, what is a, that what's on that oh it's a pokemon called coughing and it has oh little, yeah yeah uh, little spiral eyes and it's because uh, the idea with this pack was the dank pack. So it's like four shades of green, uh, a yellow, and a purple. You could, you could put it together. Oh, yeah. um, and then, uh, uh, and so uh, there, there's that. Um, the, the loser collab, uh, um, I'm so stoked on, on yeah. that. Uh, Is that that's all gonna... faded strings? Yeah, yeah. So like six. So each one will come with like six of these like faded strings. Yeah. That, uh, like I died by hand. Um, it's really dope art that comes in sticker form of like yeah oh those are so this. cool and, how, when, um, when do those go live and how much are they going to be they, they should be um they should be up um next like probably within this like next week maybe next weekend so well, so for this one specifically me and um uh, me and lou are actually like this this brand of strings is just like a big donation so um mm. I, I believe like there's like going to be a base price i'm just like twenty dollars for the extra label label put in and for like where so the funds for these strings are uh we're gonna get it split between um rain and anti-sexual like uh, sexual assault like nonprofit and um the asian mental health collective another nonprofit for um yeah so some of the profits going towards those different different charities yeah that's so cool and, and i think uh the running that i like i'm not i'm not for sure on this this part of it but a running idea uh is that like there'll just be an extra option where like you could pay this like base amount like and then be able to support in that but it's like you could put in like another like there's like going to be a, maybe a drop down for another amount but just so in case like a donate. Want, donate yeah yeah just like donate more and yeah i i just like uh with like kendama with the strings and everything like with everything it's been able to help support me like i also want to give back every time i get i can and with working with someone like lou and like making it this like whole sick thing just Mm -hmm. oh no that's i love it yeah I'm stuck on that okay so i'm curious you don't have to answer this but i yeah. i love getting into the economics of things a, a little bit mm -hmm. how how many string packs do you think you've sold in total from when you started doing this do you okay. know okay um i'm trying to think because the first uh for a good amount of 2019 when my strings first released i wasn't the one making them yet it was ken lab and but man, I've lost track. I, I probably have like in my invoices, like exactly how much, but like. Are you over a thousand? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm over a thousand. I'm just like, how much over a thousand am I? Yeah. But that's, dude, that's a lot. Like that's each crazy. string pack is six strings. So six strings. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So obviously like it's a fair amount. And if you're selling mm -hmm. them for what you, you typically sell them for like 15, 20 bucks. I think uh, on the grain theory site, they're 13. Uh, okay. uh, we have like a wholesale, like basically like I'm just making it and wholesaling yeah. to everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That, that's still cool. So like you have created a product that's generated t over $10,000 worth of revenue. Yeah, you know, yeah. do you, do you see this becoming like a, a substantial part of your income at some point where this can be a primary thing for you? No. Yeah. Like honestly, um, in, with like everything happening, like the pandemic and like all that, uh, at least for, for me personally, I've been super grateful that the strings have been, the strings helped me pay my rent and bills. Like I'm able to mm -hmm. at least like do that with just the string revenue, which, helps help so much and then yeah. i'm always just trying to just like do some like other side things on the side absolutely like, but i'm i'm just like e even now i'm so like blown away that like damn like these strings are helping like uh, i like yeah i i'm like i i have I, i'm still working on being like yo it's it's fine like it's cool like keep working on it like sometimes i just think too hard about it <laughs> yeah yeah Dude, that's yeah. super cool. Okay, so, okay. Let, theoretically, hypothetically, let's say you, you and I were to collab and do a string pack for Cafe mm -hmm. Kanama. What would that process look like when you go through a collab process with someone? Is it mostly oh, yeah. guided by you or is it mostly guided by the person wanting to do a string pack? Yeah. Like, how do you I'd do that? Say, 
I'd say it's a pretty like 50 50 split like off like um with everyone I've worked with it, it always came with like a dm on Instagram like hey uh would you want to meet me <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but and then uh it always like starts off um, um like I I'll, I'll always ask what colors are you thinking of or where do you want to inspire this and and so it, like that's always the initial thing and then i'll start being like i'll start to pick up colors and be like what do you think on this and mm -hmm. this and then usually there's like kind of a back and forth on just like talking about so what design do you want to do for this like stamp like i'll always i'll, I'll always start like yeah i'm gonna do like a custom stamp for this bag um custom sticker like and work on them like how exactly they want to go about it like say with rage quit they have their uh there's their own like graphic designer person so mm -hmm. we'd like me me and the owner like we just bounce back ideas like i he'd be like uh check out this graphic and we always be like yeah ooh, or whatever and yeah work off of that and then i just start to like i already just start to order the strings like start to preemptively get everything bundled up and then as like oh the stamper is ready have the bags ready uh, the stickers are here oh mm -hmm. i guess i'm i'm guess i'm putting them in and and always doing the pictures like i i like that's I've I've learned to love just like man, prop photo photography is like kind of fun to do. Like, mm -hmm. and yeah, I just I just like being out. Know, like it's it's always it's a full like collaborative piece like w with whoever I'm working with, and it's it's really just like I I just want to give like them like whoever I'm working with like their recognition. Like often we'll have it just I'll be like yeah, dude, your site like is this isn't going to go through mm -hmm. grain theory because like I want everyone to have their equal share and. It'd be like, yeah, just like I pay your strings, but like you get like whatever you need from whatever you're trying to support. And yeah, totally. For me, that's that's like the biggest thing, just like helping or like help be a part of like anyone trying to get moves done. Like, say, uh, I provided the strings for uh, all of Damon's TC. Like, it came with a red, like a, a, a tiny red pack of my strings. Yeah. All the PDOX Lotus, like I, I made like half, like half pack stream packs. Yeah, those are so cool. Yeah. Those dolls turned out really nice. We can maybe talk about that in a bit, but mm -hmm. yeah, dude, yeah, that's just, like a, just a bunch of different things. It will work. It will be a little different depending on who. But yeah. so if you're trying to do a cafe, uh, like well, you know, uh, I'll, well, we'll chat later. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I, I send stuff to Canada often, so I know yeah, everything well, about the. Hold on, we're, we're gonna pose like this so this can be our, our title no, image no, for the yeah, episode. Yeah, dude, uh, it will be um. So maybe one hand. Uh, uh, it's like imagine a hand with like the cafe thing here, <laughs> uh, and then my hand with here, and then the <laughs> and it's like wrapped around its string like like the Chinese. Finger That's capsule. a sick yeah. idea. Yeah, like the Chinese finger trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just be like, work, homies working together. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Cool, man. Uh, let let's uh, let's chat a little about grain theory. I mean, we we've yeah, definitely yeah. heard your story in terms of you going on onto the grain theory uh, team. You've been on the Dominerds. We've heard a little bit of the story there. I definitely mm -hmm. recommend people go back and listen to that episode as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But, check it out. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you've been on you've been on there a couple times. You're on there for uh, GT Optics Co. just recently mm -hmm. as well, which is so sick. I yeah. love what you guys are doing. Hey, let me just like a little moment of praise. I, yeah, I yeah. love what GT does. Uh, GT is such a cultural moving uh, piece in the Kanama mm -hmm. community. I think that they've done a really good job at selecting individuals for their team that are more than just the tricks they do. Of course, you guys are all incredible at playing Kanama, but you yeah. all bring a unique perspective into the game that has elevated the game to a different level. Not mm -hmm. in terms of playstyle necessarily, though that's a piece of it, but in terms of like what it means to play Kanama and the culture that comes with it. So mm -hmm. I uh, thank you, first yeah. off, for, for GT and what you guys are doing. I think you guys have definitely turned Kanama into something yeah. different than a children's toy, right? It's mm -hmm. become more. Yeah. But uh, talk to me briefly about, you know, what the journey has been like with GT for you, getting sponsored. We yeah. talked a little bit about that, but more recently, you know, what... What has yeah. that been like? Your pro mod an announcement it, since then? Yeah, so um, it, it's it's funny. There's always a, re a reoccurring like, man, my self confidence and like self doubt always gets a little finicky with me. But so it, it all goes back to like um, it was it was like kind of a bit after Nako in 2019. Uh, there was like a big group of like the team here in Santa Cruz. We were out filming and everything and. It's like one of the first times I'm like really like ser like very much filming with Jake. I'm like, oh man, this is kind of weird. Like Jake never films me, <laughs> and and just like at the end of the day, uh, I 
Jake hits like we're in a big group picture setting um with like the team and Jake is like yo a um he's like oh yeah uh pro team picture Adrian get in this one and I'm like I'm yo-yoing like <laughs> I'm yo-yoing he's like, not even playing kendama he's like yo Adrian join the pro photo you're yeah. going pro yeah, he's just like um, sitting in the background yo-yo yeah, yeah, no, I was like yo-yoing, doing my thing, and then I just turned out over uh, Jake, and I'm like just staring at him like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, like there's like a, it, it took me maybe three minutes to walk over there and like really feel like, realize what was happening, but I'm just like, oh, damn, like, it, it's happening. Like, what, I just got at, like, asked a question. Um, I'm just like, and Jake is just like, start thinking about your pro mod and i'm just like <laughs> about that. Um, immediately i'm like already starting to sketch out like yeah kind of my mod and all i knew was i want grooves for my string on it yeah and well okay so that that was a bold yes. decision right like that that was a decision to change the classic comp yeah. composition of a kendama mm -hmm. uh, and and obviously like there were no I'm I'm not you know yeah, you yeah. look back at the forums and what people were saying at the time when it came out and you know people were questioning it challenging it is this going to be JKA yeah. approved is this going to be this and that and it's like yeah well, yeah when you released that and you saw some of those comments from people that just like a little bit naive uh, mm. what what did that what did that spark in you oh dude oh man it was like it was all my fears happening because like even my whole design process i'm like oh man people are gonna trash me <laughs> like yeah or like or even like I'm, I'm making this like i feel like i almost like i i even left the designing process being like am i sure of what i want to do <laughs> like because I, yeah. I ended up with like a kanama i'm happy with and then, and i was also with ben and tio and jake we we're all making the, the two and their pro mods and people they're like yo dude it's fire and i'm just like oh man what if it's weird like mm -hmm. and uh I, I, at least with me personally like i've been kind of more like just like a uh, social media lurker the past like couple of months and it's, it's just because like at least for me um i i i'm always grateful for all these like endless stream of positive comments but even just something a little like slight shade my way makes me just like Oh man, what Dude, it, like yeah. Like, Let me just slide into my extra large sweater that I just Yeah, bought. yeah, it's yeah, I'm just like uh, yeah, I get the hoodie on. I I pull it pull it tight. I'm just like, "Oh man." Yeah. <laughs> like Yeah, but well, I feel that. But I'm but I'm very hyped for just like pe people that have been able to try my mod like just say like, "Yo, dude, it's so honed." And I'm like, "You think so?" <laughs> Dude, like, I, I think that's probably one of the coolest moments for designing a pro mod is not even mm -hmm. like releasing it, but getting the feedback back and yeah. seeing someone find joy in playing something that you designed, that you mm -hmm. created and that you get to go and inspire someone with something physical uh, yeah. that they get to go and inspire someone else with. I think that's yeah. a beautiful picture. Yeah. And it's like, I felt, I felt like, I felt so strong just about the string packs. Like people were like, dude i love it like i i love using it what are there more and, and i'm like the string packs like being being on grain theory being pro for grain theory having a mod i'm still to i'm never not thinking that wow this is so crazy is that really happening like i'm, I'm in disbelief every single day to, mm -hmm. about all of that yeah absolutely what is what is going pro done for you and to you both like mentally um, like, how has that changed your perspective on the community, on the game? Yeah. Has that changed you at all? I, I feel like, um, man, that's a that's a big question. Like, because definitely my mindset just like changed in a way, or like, there there's like, I guess like different different parts where, uh, say, uh, very initially, just like the the release of my mod it's just like immediate imposter syndrome again like oh mm -hmm. man like <laughs> i'd have i have some like negative like some like sometimes like negative like loops within myself being like oh man mm -hmm. that to edit is so amazing <laughs> and mm -hmm. or just just like things like that but also i'm just starting to think more about like in a sense for like because i'm like pro for grain theory and just like the opportunities like around me uh uh, one thing is one thing for me is like I just want to collaborate and just like make more moves with like my friends like people I support like mm -hmm. and Green Theory just being able to help provide like a platform to do so and also just thinking more about like man like I want to just contribute more to the game and like 
in all the avenues I like I love and how I want to and like it just it made me more like inclined to or not inclined like like stuff for like teaching with Kendama Institute um wa like wanting to contribute to the game like filming more like doing like all these things that like in my come up were so essential and I just want to mm -hmm. help like like more than ever just help provide like a mo like the space for everyone coming in everyone that's still here and just help like grow the game more so it's mm. it's very general but like i've i've been thinking so much in that type of like headspace like mm -hmm. what can i do to help yeah and i think i've seen that too right you you have involved yourself in different ways it's you've in some ways like created pathways and opportunities for other people to step up and learn now mm -hmm. now that you've become pro it's like now you're trying to create a platform for other people to excel on whether or not that's yeah. by teaching and whether or not that's by, you know, Kendama Institute or just who you are, you know, you've mm -hmm. made things accessible for people and you've shown people that there's a way to, you know, have influence without even having to like necessarily do the tricks. Like, yes, you've done yeah. that with your tricks, but also with your videography, also by creating a product that people love, your string packs, mm -hmm. right? It's like yeah. that, that to me, A, is so cool because not many people are doing that. And I've been, you know, trying to encourage people, generally speaking, to, mm. to find something that they can do outside of their tricks that brings value to the community. And mm -hmm. if you can do that, you will be noticed far above anyone else because everybody's doing tricks. Sure, you have to work yeah. really hard to stand out as someone who does good tricks. But if you can mm -hmm. find another way to bring value to the people around you in this community, you, are, you will be so loved. You'll be so appreciated and people will come to you. You don't have to, you don't have to hustle yeah. <laughs> for people to, to come and like your post. You don't have to hustle mm -hmm. to like, people bring, give value and people will give value back. Mm -hmm. Principally, no, yeah. I believe that. Yeah, dude, like the va value is all circular in, in my opinion. Do like good that. and good will come. Yeah. Yeah, man. But Dude, absolutely. Okay. But okay. I yeah, want to take yeah. a moment here because I think there, I think there's something here that is good to talk about that I think people need to hear that I think you've been mm -hmm. touching on and hitting around and the whole concept of imposter syndrome, right? And, yeah. and this is outside of Kendama. And obviously, you've been kind of journeying through this life of building up to these things and like getting mm -hmm. all these achievements, selling tons of string packs, selling all this stuff and still feeling like an imposter uh, living in this world that Obviously, mm -hmm. you've deserved. Anyone from the outside would look to you and say, like, no, Adrian, you, you do deserve this. You, you've done the yeah. work. <laughs> you've hustled. You've got it. But I want to know, like, how are you combating that emotional side? How are you actually overcoming that? Because that's going to hold you so mm -hmm. captive. No, yeah, because for me, it's just, um, like, there's, there's, like, a lot of different avenues that have been helping for me. One is just being a lot more vocal to either my friends, people, like, my teammates, like, I like more than ever, like even just like I talk to Jake and Matt a lot, like just just being like realizing that I just kept so many of these like kind of negative thoughts, like just it's like um, you're just having a very steep, uh, long steeping brew up in here. I'm just like it just kind of gets mm -hmm. more and more bitter the longer you just let it sit. And I just like help just laying it out being like, dude, I feel like this and just hearing like either reassurance like validation from people for different for different mm -hmm. things like it helps a lot like it helps like help pull yourself out of your your own lens and just see it like just see like what other people think because it could help a lot and for, for me personally um like uh I've, I've been just always having issues with like my own mental health and i've been more than like in the like pandemic helped like definitely jump start like i gotta do some active change dude like mm -hmm. And for, what did that me, look if, if you don't yeah. like if you don't mind talking about this uh what did that what did that look like for you what did that mean for you to seek active change like what steps did you take yeah so um one one was like just getting in charge of my health health like i'm it's like oh man i'm not eating good i'm not sleeping good like that's that's like always like a thing where it's like people forget like the stuff you intake affects your your mental well-being it's it's wild and like even just like oh man I need to exercise like just like I need to get endorphins and like my body is lacking some serotonin bro and mm -hmm. and from uh, to that um, I I journal a lot I meditate so much now and and more recently like I'm I'm I've been trying to just like seek out like a proper therapist just like to help me with my own mm -hmm. issues and just even even just like in the process of taking all these steps like I from my own perspective I just see like a so much like brighter more optimistic mm. outlook and like for different people like everyone has their own help that like works differently for you and i think it's all just about like trying to seek what will work for you and 
like it only can only it only goes up from trying like like what you said way 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 back mm -hmm. yeah and yeah dude absolutely i think people need to i, I think that's really valuable for people to hear I, it's valuable for me to hear uh, like yeah. I think this past year for so many people has been either a really great year in terms of growth that they found mm. new life, new friends, new, new passion. And then for other people, it's been a really challenging year mm -hmm. uh, mentally, mentally for, yeah. for people and physically like health wise. I think so many mm -hmm. of us are just like deteriorated. We haven't yeah. been getting outside because we have to stay inside. We haven't been talking to the people we need to be talking to because we don't get the opportunity to talk to them. One of, one of my mentors in my life, I've, I've hardly been able to see because, you know, he's immunocompromised and, you know, we've, oh, we've yeah. met up maybe once or twice in the past 12 months, which mm -hmm. is crazy to me. And I hate, you know, having real conversations via a phone call or a Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. Like, that stuff beats me up. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you 100% on that. So, no, yeah. I, I feel, I, 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 yeah, just like, like I was saying, like the pandemic helped like jump, like it definitely jump started some things or like maybe, maybe I'm not the only one that had maybe some like kind of issues like already sort of brewing, but then like pandemic helped like put them to the front, like, yo, dude, like, mm -hmm. this is what's up. Like, yeah, well, I think the pandemic's shown us a little bit more of like who we actually are, or at least just mm -hmm. kind of like unmasked how we're feeling mm -hmm. about whatever it is you know we we've seen people's truer identities behind the masks that we've put on for so long yeah. in our social social circles you know and mm -hmm. we've seen people break down we've also seen people rise up amidst it yeah. and i think i think i i i think both sides to that coin are both good and bad right it's like mm -hmm. we no exactly we have seen some dark times in people especially even in the canonical community like mm -hmm. I, I try to not talk too much about what's going on you know in the negative cultural sides of canola yeah, but like yeah. We, we've gone through some really challenging seasons as a Kanawha mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of that is due to the unmasking that's just unfolded. And part of that yeah. is because we're so tensioned up right now. We are so mm -hmm. caught up in this world where we're just holding on and we're, we're all you know, stuck in our homes and we just need to vent out to someone. Yeah. And then we finally snap and we show who we really are. And, and that's been some of that journey that's been unfolding and both mm -hmm. on, on good sides and bad sides. We've seen, you know, some really bright individuals pop up and bring a new light to things and other people yeah. at the same time, you know, not necessarily bringing a great light. It's been, yeah. it's been a, it's been a weird year, man. It, it's, it's very been a, weird. Yeah. It's been a, it's been to some, I could definitely see like, damn things, things like things to get like a little rocky, but it's especially for like everyone that's been here like in the game for a while like man things comes in waves and not not every wave is the nicest but it'll keep pushing you so yeah, yeah. we we were talking earlier about kind of the evolution of kanama i and and you had some a lot of thoughts on it uh, and i think more what you were saying where you had thoughts on like the progression of the game itself but i'm curious from your perspective because mm -hmm. you, you've been around for a while you you really yeah, like yeah. the thing about these things how have you seen the evolution of kanama as a culture on the cultural side of things. What does that look like from your eyes? Yeah, so um, I, I like, I definitely can see like how, like just like, I, I, I've, been, I've been talking to this like to a lot of the homies like, yo dude, in this past like year and a half, like the Kendama community is way bigger than any of us could imagine that it, it ever has been. And with just like an influx of like different people, different perspective, like new minds, like inevitably like you'll get all the issues of, of like human culture where there's good clashing and like mm -hmm. people aren't thinking all the same things and i i just like but i i can see it as like a positive thing too because like like you only grow by taking in more and more perspectives and like like i was saying like things things can get rocky and bad and like we've seen like a fair share of that but there's always like some crazy crazy light that comes out of it we're, like we're, we may never know what it is in the moment but like, no we, always, we rarely ever do it's always in hindsight yeah. it's almost always hindsight yeah because like i could i i, I don't know if like I, anyone else shared this sentiment but in, in 2016 when things kind of like like kind of like boomed out like there was like this kind of like unsure like uncertainty in the community or like oh man what what's happening what's hap going next and like even if it wasn't a direct cause what ended up happening was oh man shapes got bigger things got more gnarlier things could start like a different way of progression just started like taking hold and like and i feel like that's just 
that's just like the cycle of how things work. Mm-hmm. Like there's ups and there's downs and there's mm-hmm. always uncertainty. And that's, and that's uncertainty isn't always like bad or good. It's just uncertain. <laughs> like you just don't it's know. It's just uncertainty. Yeah. 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 What, what do you think is next? You know, we're, we're, um, we're in a weird year, yeah. right? You know, COVID has obviously changed every community everywhere mm-hmm. in the world. Uh, but what do you think is coming next for Kendama? What do you yeah. see as the next two years from your eyes? I could see um as like events and like in real like in person events are starting to like come to service again. That'll just like um just by looking at the trajectory of an event like NACO and like or MKO into NACO where I witnessed like six years or like whatever amount of years straight where oh there's like a hundred more people this year. There's like a hundred and fifty more people this year. We we filled the venue and most of the hotel this year, and like I just I just see like th- those events, th- those like instances, like gathering, like real, like really meeting people, are are like the catalyst for like extreme passion. And the more people are just like so passionate about the game, like it, the game kind of builds itself because mm-hmm. those are the same individuals trying to get their friends into it, or anyone else I encounter is. Or this is where they make these like relationships with people at these events that last for years on end, mm-hmm. which could like, like, you know, like things just, uh, the way Kendama works, like everything ends up full circle at the, at the end in so many crazy ways. So I just see yeah. the circle getting bigger and bigger over time. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we're going to go into a really cool season here. I don't know what it'll mm-hmm. look like entirely, but exactly, I think we're, we're at one of those turning points, right? I mm-hmm. think, you know, uh, there, there's a book called Crossing the Chasm. It's like a business book, whatever. Okay. I, don't, I don't even remember who wrote it. I haven't read it, but I'm <laughs> just familiar with the concept. And it's like, there, there's the early adopter phase and then the early majority. And we're like kind of in that chasm right now between those mm-hmm. two spaces where Kandala finally hits like a, a boom. And, yeah. you know, it's more culturally known. It's broad scope, you know, finally mm-hmm. adopted and mainstream. There's large events. We're going to see non-Kendama companies integrating into Kendama. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we're in the chasm right now of whether, you know, do we stay as a niche? Do we stay in a small community? And yeah. do the people that want it to go there just end up leaving? And we return back to our grassroots of who we are mm-hmm. and we just stay there. Or do we allow ourselves to go through a moment of change? Do we allow ourselves to be yeah. exposed to a broader community? Because mm-hmm. that's going to radically change Kendama more than we yeah, can, yeah, yeah. can even anticipate. It's like skateboarding culture. Skateboard, skateboarding went through the exact same thing. BMX mm-hmm. went through the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not going to be the same. It'll yeah, change. And, it'll be different. Yeah. No, and I think that's like a thing. That, that's like, I feel like that's why so, there, sometimes I'll classify Kendama players are like, Ah, oh, you're a boomer Kendama player, or, you're, <laughs> or 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 like I used to I used to um, like make fun of Jake or like and Damon because they tied knots on the top of their tamas, and I'm like, do you hate progress? <laughs> I tie and, knots on top of my tamas. No, no, I see, I see that. It's for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah and at the end of at the end of the day, for me, string is all preference. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, just. Oh man, like, dude, who knows? It is going to be yeah, a fun time. I, I, I like to play a backseat to the community. I mm. like to watch things, observe things, and just, you know, begin to just see the connection. I want to play a role where I like to, to listen, to learn, and document mm-hmm. the story of what's yeah. happening. And I think that's been the fun journey of review is like, I've now been doing this for almost a year. We're coming up on, on the one year anniversary, that's crazy. less than 30 days. It's actually nuts. Uh, we've go. been rocking like 52 episodes almost in a row. We only mm-hmm. ever skipped one week. We're coming up on that one year anniversary. And it's like, I can't wait to like see someone f- three years down the road, come back and listen to early episodes of the show and be like, whoa, Kendama was so different back then. Yeah. It's like, even, what- um, even just hearing some of the stories from pe- people's, Inter, like reviews i'm like i didn't know that what <laughs> yeah. like this and I'm, I'm like i'm always just like the lore never ends it's like it's uh, yeah like, we're, we're just documenting and i think there's more fun stuff coming down the road and, and i'm trying to just play my part in the picture mm-hmm. of of keeping the integrity of kendama where it is with the people no, yeah. and then allowing you know the story to unfold and build off of this and for new mm-hmm. stories to be told i think that's yeah. where that's where the real joy comes in is like allowing yeah. the story to tell itself, but at least having a scribe to write it down throughout the journey. No, yeah, because that's key because like 
you never want to lose the vibe. But like when never. the vibe is gone, man, <laughs> things will things will be bad. Like <laughs> quote Adrian Esteban, when the vibe is gone, ooh, things yeah, will be yeah. bad. <laughs> exactly. Keep the vibe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. like, that grassroots vibe I think is integral to like what Kendama is like at its core and like at least for me like even like even though I'm unsure about how things will progress that's something I, I it's like a pillar I want to like kind of like revolve around like this is like at the end this is the key like mm -hmm. I don't care however what else you want to do with the Dama but don't forget these mm -hmm. yeah exactly exactly Lee. Dude, Adrian, we have been rocking for a hot minute here. We've been going for two oh. hours. Uh, oh, we, oh we, my God. Let, let's put a bow on yeah, this yeah. here real quick here um, and, and kind of wrap it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah. Let's go. But uh, let me say first off, before we kind of get to some cl concluding points here, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for jumping on here. Thank you for the work that you've done in the Kendama community to just grow it in a different way. Again, I said this about GT, but again, specifically mm -hmm. about you, you have played a very pivotal role in the community in the past, you know, you, you've been a breakout player for the past several years in changing the way people perceive the limitlessness yeah. of this game. We were so confined as a culture into seeing it as ball and cup. We didn't, mm. even, we didn't even think about using the string to the same degree mm. that you've thought about doing it. We didn't even get to talk about yo-yo at all, but I think we can just yeah. visualize and see what that is because you've been mm. documenting that through your tricks and mm -hmm. you've, you've changed the way Kendama is perceived. No, dude, uh, man, uh, that was like a big unloading on me. I'm just like, really no for real just, just thank you like do for real no you, you've been a cultural piece you are doing great work i want to see more stuff and i want to see more of the documentation the, the yeah. edits and stuff i'm literally looking at uh a youtube search result of adrian esteban on my other monitor here mm -hmm. it's like you have edits you have stories you have documents uh people need to go watch that and see the journey that you've been unfolding there's a great uh, video of by Lotus Kanama is documenting oh, your, yeah. your journey as well and how you've changed the game of Kanama. And, and we don't even know the impact that has yet. I think Dude. I was chatting with uh, Joe about this last week. We were talking about one mm -hmm. A Kanama, two A Kanama, three A Kanama. Like what happens when we start evolving into competitive Kanama that has different types of competitions mm -hmm. like Yo-Yo? That will be dedicated back to you because you showed a different way of playing Kanama. So for real, man, yeah. you literally have changed the way that Kendama is journeying. And so that is not to be taken lightly by any means. Man, it, it's uh, if it, like, at least how I see it, I'm just, I'm like, a, just like a little piece to the mosaic that is Kendama. And it's just cool yeah. to add. Like, Dude, we all are, but some people play a bigger piece in that mosaic than others. Ah, <laughs> and you've done yeah. a, a pretty big job. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah. for real though uh adrian yeah. thank you so much i i'm really excited to see the journey unfold excited for this new drop of the luzumaki strings yeah. that are coming out with the collab guys yeah. need to go cop that go support some good things and, and maybe uh check out this uh spec version of my mod coming super super soon go check it out i, I might have to put in an order for one of them i haven't purchased a, a dama in a while i yeah. need to I need to scoop one mm -hmm. i haven't had a, a fresh gt in a while the last gt i think i bought was uh, a half spec, uh, a spec Serato Christian oh, Einetter. Oh, the hybrid. At, yeah, the hybrids at yeah. NACO. And it has an Adrian Esteban string on it. So I, oh, did I bought it? Hold on. I, let me see if I yeah. can grab this here for you. Good old K, oh, KA mod with the dude, espresso. Yeah. I had to get the espresso cups, of course. Mm. And they were the only ones that were there was the KA with that orange string. Mm. Dude, the orange that, is classic. It's the classic yeah. Esteban, the orange or the neon yellow. So yeah. guys, give Adrian some love. Go slide onto his recent post. Go drop him a comment. Go hit the guy up. You are a very welcoming person in the DMs as well from what I've seen in the chat. Uh, yeah. If people have questions about string stuff, go hit him up. Yeah, hit it, slide it, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm always like, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that's pretty like easily anxious. Even just like I open my, I see the number in the corner. I'm like, oh, I'll check and then I'll check it and be like, ah, and, but when I get, when I, when I get the mental energy to do it, I love to reply to people and like, just absolutely. Kind of, yeah. It's always, it's always good. Just like, I like as much as like I could can like help everyone get heard or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, Adrian, thank you so much for jumping on here. For those of you that are still tuning around and you have enjoyed this episode of The Review and want to support this caffeinated journey, uh, we do have a Patreon. It's $5 a month, and that gets you behind-the-scenes access. We're starting to do some more stuff on the Patreon. I recently did a Mm -hmm. solo podcast episode on there talking about the journey of Review, and we're working on some other content, some other audio content, maybe video content. And there's some real special news that's on there for the patrons that are already on there, and they know what's coming up because we got a big one coming down the pipe in a little bit that's going to be super exciting but also uh, i'm not sure if i actually because i need to check my messages but my hope is next week we have austin donovan on the podcast next week he hasn't as far as i know he hasn't replied yet but i gotta check the dms because he is literally a mind wizard about the way that he thinks about the game of kendama the technicalities Mm. the stats and all that stuff and we just finally are getting the the trick list for kwc and i was like dude i need to get this guy on the podcast we need to talk about the trick list and the points per second and all that good stuff dude i've been thinking about it too i'm like the way it's going everyone that's going to be final qualifying they're only going to do nines and tens and and eights but maybe they won't because what if there's a level five and six trick that is a higher points per second because Dude, people that are making it this far yeah. into the episode, go back and watch the Dama Nerds episode with Austin Donovan, one of the greatest mm-hmm. podcast episodes in the Dama community for sure, because he breaks down KWC and he breaks down the yeah. points per second of the tricks that are in there and the math behind the best mm-hmm. performing runs, because it's not about what level of tricks you're doing. It's about how fast you can do the tricks and get their points. And there's certain tricks that are worth more in terms of points per second. It's literally yeah. so fun to think about. Dude, yeah, like, dude, the Kendama meta game is changing and I, I'm all for it. Dude, it's so exciting. I'm yeah. really excited for it. So Austin, DM me. I want you on the show next week. <laughs> dude, let's, I'm, I'm hyped for that. Let's go. Absolutely. And we're going to do something fun for episode 52 or the one year anniversary of the review. There's going to be a, a little surprise episode coming there. So word. Word. Go watch the edits. Lots of content in this episode. Adrian, thank you so much for jumping on here. Guys, go give Adrian some love, and we will see you guys. No, I almost forgot. I always conclude the episode by asking you if you have any words that you want to say to the community. How did I almost forget this? Okay, word, word. Um, Man, man, uh, I had so many things to say, but, dude, like love each other. Love, like, be be proud of what you do and what you put out. Um, Everyone's like so many people are watching you so like might as well set a good example it's it's really sick it's really cool and uh just one thing because i saw this question i really want to answer if you have if you haven't followed them check out elliot patterson dama flying guillotine uh kendama junkie and ncg ken because they're my favorite players on the come up and constantly inspire me and, yes yeah. Dude, those are all great players. I love them all. Uh, Elliot, yeah. Elliot's so good at Kendama. Dude, he's so... Um, and he never posts. He never plays. No, because he's so low-key, and he's only... Been, he started playing January 2019. He's it's, like... It's actually kind of dumb. No, it's he's... It's crazy. He's... I've been, I've been eyeing that dude for two years. Like, I'm... I, I want to, like... That's the sauce right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Go follow those guys. And if you're not already following Adrian, make sure you go follow him. Anyways, guys, we will see you with another caffeinated episode of The Review next week. Peace out, y'all. Peace.